last time in Renaissance. The party finished their conversation with Freeport's Sheriff Crostatin Camerth and sat down to discuss their next move. Noel pitched the idea of following up on Barnaby's revelation regarding his time in the Feywild and see what they could learn of the Fey on Feral, a nearby island. The group decided to start their island hopping adventure there. From there, they embarked on a string of meetings with various contacts, new and old. Reporter Strat de Laplin of the Freeport Chronicle, Special Agent Ciro Dodomain of the CDI, even a trip to Helmfirth to speak with Bram Helton and his cohorts at the CAA, as well as Captain Derriman of the Travail and their Gatewatch allies at the Presidium. Even the Eyes of Tear uh, made it known that they wished to take tea with the party, although they thought better of that particular interaction. And after that, the party determined that they were only waiting for Gerald to return from Tracer before leaving town. And having settled most of their pressing business, they set about busying themselves while they waited. John continued his apprenticeship. Barnaby fished, where we continued to peruse the records of the Temple of Ridia. Noel busked at the local taverns, and Lauren made the best of her job, keeping her eyes and ears open for more intel in the White Cartel. Nearly two weeks later, as the party was wrapping up a day of relaxation, enjoying the city's autumnal equinox festivities, they were surprised to see Gerald, unarmed, armorless, very worn and weary, riding up the road toward them, accompanied by the odd companions of Father Severin and Siglus. As they're all walking back to the Presidium together, Gerald quite bad off from his trip, and Father Severin frustratingly elated by words he received from his Dark Lord, are there any questions before we begin? Uh, it is... What time is it at this point? Uh, evening. So, sun is setting, and the nightlife of the city is starting to come out and uh, take hold. And it was already pretty busy today. Um, streets were generally full from morning through you know the height of the day. Right. Um, with kind of lulls between meals, but uh, now that uh, the sun is down and it's cooling off, people are coming out in droves, and there's a lot of drink around. Fair enough. I saw you perk up. <laughs> you want to grab some drinks? She already did. <laughs> I think that was like one of the last things we did last session. Yeah, the Lord grabbed as many bottles and booze as he could. Okay. Fair. Um, I got no, so yeah. no questions then. Uh, well, the group of you are uh, sort of walking towards the, the edge of town, past Fort Franco, towards the Presidium. Um, and uh, I think Gerald will probably just dismount at this point now that he's this close to home and walk his horse the rest of the way with you guys, uh, just so he's not towering over everyone. Um, he, as I, as I, said he, he does not look great torn clothes clear signs that he, he's been in some kind of like fight and he has none of his equipment with him um and uh he'll just probably just kind of like dive into his story um are we waiting things... to get back to the presidium sorry uh that was what it sounded like last time but it's up to you yeah, now that you guys are kind of like getting closer to it, he'll he'll kind of start prefacing for you guys, I guess, context. Um, we had uh, heard that there were some folks up in Chaser shopping something around that might have been our tranquil pain. I can't. I think we mentioned this last time, right? That we knew. Right, yeah. Well, um... <clears throat> Long story short, um... I... I never got to chase her. We met in a tavern kind of on the edge of town and, uh... set up a meeting to see this thing. And, uh, that meeting turned out to be a, uh, an ambush. Did not go well. Needless to say. How many ambushed you? 
Um, I'll be honest, I, I am not sure. It was a big group, and it was dark. <clears throat> Forgive me, my, I'm really parched. The ride home has been very uncomfortable. I will send him, give him another bottle of booze. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Forgive me, too, because I've been super congested today, so my voice is going to be all over the fucking place. Um, for now, it was, uh, it was at night. It was out in the desert, south of town, and um, it didn't strike me as abnormal at the time, you know? Just kind of how these uh, black market types like to do business, keep things off the, off the radar under the table, whatever, whatever expression you want to use. It's, um... Sounds a little embarrassing in hindsight, because I, I, I probably should have... should have been a little more careful, but... Here we are. So, they, uh, took my shit, and, um... left me out there, and I never got to see the fucking thing, so... Seems safer to come back than... keep pushing alone and weaponless <laughs> up there so yeah uh, good trip great trip really recommend chaser lovely town we're sorry that happened to you i appreciate it i am too honestly it's uh sucks truthfully i was kind of curious about these tranquil pains i've never heard of anything like that in my life so I was looking forward to hearing more about your experience with it, but yeah, this is uh, I was, uh, yeah. just awful. It seems like that the pain that he received wasn't tranquil at all. <laughs> I feel like you've been waiting two weeks just to make that joke. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know back then, but it is important that you are always prepared. That's so say it's a good point. You know, if Dern had been in town, we could have been on together, gone together, but um, he is taking his sweet time wherever he's at, so kind of just falls to me at this point. I feel like now we're just going to be waiting for him regardless. You all do seem a bit short-staffed. Uh, putting it lightly. Uh, as you guys kind of continue this conversation, you guys will come up to the fortress gates and Gerald will step up and just boom, boom, boom on the doors. Um, doesn't take long uh, to get an answer. Uh, Aaron actually opens the door at this time and um, she has uh, an apron on and a hammer in one of her one hand. Uh, and despite the visor over her face, she does kind of jostle a little bit in recognition and surprise. Uh, Gerald, weren't expecting you back so soon. Thought you'd have at least another week. And yeah, well, uh, things didn't go great. Aaron just looks him over. No, it does not look like it. Shit. Yeah. Yeah, shit. All right, well, Gideon's inside if um, you want to spill the beans. So they, uh, they'll they start making their way inside, and um, Aaron just kind of glances at Siglus and Severin, and then back to Gerald, who's just like, whatever. Uh, and... Uh, just another curious look before just sort of leaving them to follow as uh, they make their way inside. Um, Severin, meanwhile, is still just like barely containing this this very like cheating grin almost. Um, Tiglu's still completely expressionless. Uh, so a lot of you sort of file inside, and you'll you'll find Gideon in the great hall. Um, there's actually a decently sized dinner spread on the table. Uh, 
it looks like they took some of that money and, and went out and actually got themselves like a, a decent sort of meal to celebrate the equinox with. There's a very large roast bird sitting on a platter. Uh, what actually looks new, um, although the rest of the dishes are still the same old kind of tin plates that they've been using. Um, there's like a bowl of potatoes, some gravy, you know, the, the nice like uh, stir fried of greens um, in a bowl off to the side. Like it, it, it's actually a full like three course meal. The first time you've seen this in this fucking uh, establishment. <laughs> um, and the Goon and Rainer are sitting there uh, chowing down with Gideon. Um, and uh, they all look up to see you guys be like, Oh, no, wait, no. Rainer and Secundo were with you guys, weren't they? Yes. Never mind. They see this. Gideon is just enjoying this meal by himself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess I guess uh, Ozak could have oh, been no. <laughs> there before she went to get the door. Yeah. Um, well, you, you see there was a, a place set up for Aaron, evidently, that hadn't been filled yet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gideon had, you know, just been kind of reading a book and waiting. Um but uh, he'll he'll see the group of you come in and be like, "Oh, you're late, Gerald. You're early." So, yeah, yeah. Um, Chaser didn't go well, so it would seem. What happened? That uh, Gerald kind of freezes up for a moment. The leaf belly guy. He he turned on us. The leaf belly guy? Yeah. You say that incredulously, and like right next to you, Rainer, like his eyes kind of go wide and he kind of meets your gaze. <laughs> you can immediately see the laughter kind of starting up, but he is doing his damnedest to fucking choke it back. I'm gonna go like get a little closer and be like, who's the leaf belly guy? <laughs> Uh, he'll re he'll lean in and he'll be like, Corporal Leaf Belly was this halfling we knew. <laughs> oh fuck! Oh, Gerald, no. So we got you're beat saying up by that a he halfling? turned a whole new Leaf Belly? Yeah, I think so. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> we don't speak of this again. <laughs> oh, we're gonna. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, Gideon is, he's got this sour face on his face. Uh, <laughs> he had the sour face on his stomach. He's yeah, his, <laughs> he's got a sour face on that head of his, um, he just nods and says, well, I suppose when you take up with criminals, this is what you get, isn't it? Are you all right, at the very least? I was like, nah, I'm, I'm fine. They left me alive. Probably good for them, but, uh... We are down more or less a full watcher now. I, I got nothing. Like, they took everything. Armor, weapons. Uh, I mean, they took my fucking pack. I'll say, uh... Well, all of that stuff's replaceable, but you're not, so we're happy that you're still here. And then I'll place a hand on his arm <laughs> as I say this, and then move, remove it. <laughs> Almost like absentmindedly, he kind of places a hand over your hand on his arm. He just nods. He's like, I, th thanks. I appreciate that. That said, though, that is a lot of really high-end equipment that is going to be very very hard to replace. And Aaron is going to kind of take that deep breath, being like, yes, that is a lot of gold gone now. I'm not sure how long it's going to take to get that sort of equipment made for you again, Gerald. Things aren't exactly booming for us. I mean, we got a small payday. She kind of glances over the table. Which payday but, is you uh, referring to? The handful of platinum you guys got off of Grimes. <laughs> oh, 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 wow, okay. So they yeah. are a little strapped for cash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
yeah, it's, um, that's not good. That's really not good. No, no, it's not. I, uh, I don't think I really have, like, another play here aside from waiting for Durin to come by and maybe I just grab some shit off a shelf and go with him back to Chaser to try and sort this out. But until he gets back, I don't think there's anything we can do about it beyond just trying to keep tabs with what's left of our friends up there. I mean, out of character, which way is Chaser? North. Dang. Well, um, although it would not be much, I'm certain that um, perhaps we could have a... And he kind of like looks at uh, Aloran. Um, some leather armor made in the meantime. That's relatively inexpensive. Mean leather armor? No, for, yeah. for, for general. Okay, pause. Out of character. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is this um, a bit? <laughs> are we talking about a gift suit? Does a Lauren make leather <laughs> armor now? No, no, yes. no, I'm saying that since the Presidium doesn't have a lot of money, that we could put together enough funds to get leather armor for Gerald since he has no armor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I was already looking at how much gold I have. <laughs> uh, well... If I could throw something out there, um, this wouldn't be a fast solution, but our group was uh, about to go explore the islands anyway, uh, shortly here, some of you know that, um, and part of our goal was to potentially look for magical items and th things to sell. Uh, you know, I, I don't know how generous we all wish to be, but we can keep our eyes open at least. The amount uh, of stuff that seems to come in our possession that we do not currently need or do not have someone who is the correct size of is... Right, like if I found a large. giant magical greatsword, I'm not going to use that, you know, so... I mean, I armor, would, I, and then I'll kinda some win. armor's not that expensive, like ring mail or scale mail. I mean, yes... But as soon as you start putting our enchantments on it, you start racking up the cost a lot. Uh, well, true. But some is better than none. In this but at least we can no, get you. At least we can get you started with some actual armor. You're 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 not wrong. You know, and I, I appreciate what you're saying. Now, thank that. Thank you. Sorry. No, I mean, Aaron. It would be a real shame if you got hit by bandits or something, and that's what took you out instead of some actual important quest. Honestly, yeah, I'm glad that uh, it never came to that. On the road home, because that would have that would have been real shit trying to beat a bunch of dudes off with a stick. If it's any consolation, um, I'm fairly sure if you had met your end on the way back, a Lauren would have torn them from limb from limb. And I'll just kind of look up and be like, "Yeah, probably." <laughs> <laughs> probably I'm pretty accurate, honestly. Leaf belly down. <laughs> he'll he'll get kind of a small grin. He'll kind of glance for you down to the paper in his hand. With with the headline and the, the tiny little etching drawing of a bear holding a head. It's like, yeah, I, I'd believe that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, thank you all. I, I appreciate it. Um, I do think I'll probably be sticking around the Presidium for a little while, though, just because, just you know probably should be wandering around alone quite as much until we're back to back to full loadout but um at the very least I can get some work done around here around town if it's any consolation Oh god. Forgot about it. <laughs> he was waiting for his moment to strike. Oh no. Severn will speak up. Uh I believe that our Dark Lord wishes for us to pick up where you have left off, my dear watcher. We have received a sign, a vision, 
of a great slate shining in the dark. We believe this to be your tranquil pain, no? An item that would forewarn of extra planar dangers. I believe that the Lord Core has your best interest at heart. He has sent us here to Freeport. He has asked us to wait, and wait we did, and here you are. It has now come full circle in my eyes. I see we at last have a way forward. This leaf belly fellow, you say, a, a contact of yours and Chaser, is there anywhere that we might be able to find him uh, ourselves to continue this investigation in your stead? Gerald has got, like, the nastiest fucking side eye right now <laughs> uh, at this guy. Burberry uh, is suddenly very glad that he wears a full mask because he is very amused. <laughs> Lauren's trying not to look irritated <laughs> by this guy. <laughs> just like, what is, what's this guy's name? Again? He... Uh, Father Severin. Severin. Yes. Every interaction with him is quite severe. <laughs> Therein. Like this long dark hair, heavy like eyeliner, the choker, the fucking like tight fitting black robe with the embossed ro roses and thorns and skulls and shit. Like just basically the embodiment of it's not a phase, mom. <laughs> He's been in this phase for like thirty years. <laughs> like... It really wasn't a phase. This guy is goth as fuck. Um and uh, Siglus is similarly dressed, although he's like totally like just clean shaven, bald, heavy, like big, broad dude, and just like jet black armor with the same sort of embellishments on it. Um, it was extra to stain it black. Not much. <laughs> Little special oil. <laughs> Some time in the sun. Cute. Ventilates well. I mean, it looks very becoming on you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> I have to say this just because you said becoming. No, I don't. Never mind. Please continue. <laughs> uh, is that something you plan on doing later, eh? It was a very. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> it was a pickup line. Instead of, I was on you, I'd be coming too. <laughs> I'm going to pretend you didn't say that. I said that out of character. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, Gerald, just uh, in reply to Severin, is just going to say that, um, yeah, uh, Leaf Belly doesn't exactly keep a permanent address. He's he's pit people. He keeps down to the fucking slum. He's, he's not someone you can find unless he wants you to find him. Says, well, the pit, at the very least, is somewhere to start. And, uh, Gerald, you just, a couple of you notice, uh, Burberry and Allure, and just very faintly, this just, like, flicker of, of, like, frustration on his face. Just like, ah, damn it. <laughs> it slipped. Uh, everyone says, well, if you do wish to keep your secrets, I will not press you too much further, but I did want to share the good news with you, uh, and your marshal. We will find this pain one way or another, rest assured. I promise this to you. In the name of our Dark Lord, I bid you all a fair equinox. I believe it is time we take our leave. Siglus, come. And he will turn on his heel. Cloak in hand. <laughs> Whoosh. Safe travels to the both of you. And to you. Enjoy your time in the Isles. Uh, yes, and... Rain is broken. Uh oh. Wait a second. Sorry. <laughs> it's like an old printer. Um, please make Canthor smile upon you. I hope he does. Cause blessing. And uh, he will make his way out. Siglus will give one single nod to everyone in the room, slowly, in turn, before also turning and out of the room. As soon as they're out of earshot, I'm gonna be like, oh my god, they're finally gone. 
<laughs> you know, it can be quite amusing if you take a drink every time he says Dark Lord. <laughs> next time. <laughs> next I, time. <laughs> I have a question, Hopefully actually. there's not a next time. <laughs> I feel like one of you might be able to answer this. What does he mean by Dark Lord? Like, isn't that what oh. Willem was all about? Well, allow me to enlighten you. Uh, and then I, <laughs> I basically give him the, the lowdown on uh, here. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of the older gods from the Pantheon. Uh, the first of the gods to take stewardship of souls. So kind of like a, a fairy man. Hmm. Uh, if you're going by old logic. A psychopomp. Gideon will uh, chime in. That, yes. Very into death and trickery. You don't see those two very often. So not so not much together, anyway. evil, just morbid. A little bit, yes. That makes more sense. Uh, it actually falls into the neutral chaotic category. Hmm. Death by piano, if you will. <laughs> Only the black keys, though. Interesting. That is kind of funny. Uh, Daryl just kind of grimaces. It's just like, well, fuck. Although, I will say, I do have to admire his sense of self. If nothing else. He has committed to an aesthetic. <laughs> I respect that. That is fair. Even if it drives me bonkers. Again, our Dark Lord. And I'm going to take a big <laughs> Gerald will join you in that. I feel like that's something that whenever we were sitting for like... Oh wait, no, never mind. Take it back. Alright. Uh, Gerald will just kind of like take a look at Gideon trying to read a response almost and you can kind of see Gideon puzzling it over. Was... I'm not sure that I'm wholly comfortable with the Death Watch taking over this hunt, but uh, without anyone else to field, we don't really have much say in it. For the time being, it's out of our control. I don't think we need to worry about it until... Um, we get word they're getting close. I know. Did Severin actually say he would bring the pain? That sounds like a very nice colloquialism. He's <laughs> gonna bring the pain. <laughs> Worth noting, he didn't actually mention he would bring it back. And that, I think, is the most concerning part to me, at least. And I, as well. He didn't kind of second that. He might still be in message range. <laughs> I mean, on the upside, his aesthetic is extremely uh, unique, so he'd probably be fairly easy to track down. And he does seem to annoy every single head of the conclave that he meets. At least he annoyed the one that's here very thoroughly. That is a plus. At least as soon as we're mobile again, we'll be able to catch up pretty quickly. That shouldn't be too difficult. We should really see about getting word out to Durin. Do we have enough coin to, like, get a sending out or something? And Gideon will be like, we have some. We might be able to finagle a deal with someone down at one of the academies. Yeah, it, uh, that might be something to look into. But tomorrow, then. But yeah. Do know someone. Yeah. He helped me contact my mom. Baby, what are you doing? She is like crinkling that bag as hard as she can. <laughs> um, in response to you, Barnaby, excuse me, uh, Gerald will very pleasantly surprised be like, uh, if you know a guy, yeah, that'd be great. We could definitely use somebody around here that can get that out. Parker just starts snapping his fingers. What was his name again? <laughs> I'm believe... trying to remember. Uh, let's see. Springbell. 
Springbell. That was it. I knew it was an S word. Uh, Professor Springbell, we talked to you. Uh, sent, you did a sending free of charge for us. Perhaps we could uh, oh. ask a favor. Professor Springbell? That's what I had. Okay. Was he a professor? I never called that. Yes, he was a professor. Well, how about that? I would not call him a friend, necessarily. Just someone who was very kind. But or, uh, where did you meet this Springbell guy? The... Oh, I already lost the page. The Unhaling Academy. That... Alright, that would do it. Yep. Get in and be like, yes, that, uh... Hmm. Are you it, not on the best of terms? I mean, we're not on good terms with anybody, let's be real. But, uh... Didn't one of us take the message? It didn't hurt. Although, none of you have met Durin, so that might be difficult. Hi, Durin. I'm a friend of the Gatewatch, and I'm here to send you a message. Repeat message. <laughs> He's saying that on account that if we're not familiar, it would be much harder to send the message. Yeah. Oh. Well, we Usually those kinds of spells. To Barnaby's mother. Right. A little bit of help from my transforming. I mean, if you guys want to come with, that would help. Um, I was going to say, I, I don't know if it's going to go bad. I mean, it's, it's been a while since we really tried to interface with the inhalen they're not bad dudes Gideon's like no they would be um, useful allies to have if they were a little stronger in the spine yeah, that's true I probably wouldn't say things like that around them um, honestly this doesn't have to be a large deal like no no, no 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 it no, doesn't I... have to be like on the official order of the gatewatch you know we demand this no, you're right. I There's baggage. There's always fucking baggage. It's just this place. He just looks around at the fucking ruined ass castle. Um Yeah, uh if you guys are cool with that, I I would appreciate the help talking to this guy tomorrow. Sure. We could definitely get word out to Durin faster. It should not take long. Appreciate it. Well, all that aside, I'm okay for what it's worth. Like I'm, I'm tired as hell, but uh, we're in good shape. So if y'all need anything done around here, I can start pitching in for bed. Katie and Aaron just kind of glance at each other, and they're like, "It's, it's the equinox. We're not doing much more than this." And uh, she'll gesture to the table. You're welcome to join us if you're hungry. We uh, we bought a lot. Bought a lot of alcohol. And I'll start unpacking my bag <laughs> of all the bottles <laughs> and put them <laughs> on the table. <laughs> Rainer will immediately take a seat and be like, I am not going to say no to a second meal. <laughs> um, Sikudu will probably sit Do down with him. Lord? Lord, Lord. Lord. And then I drink. <laughs> <laughs> like, to the darkest Lord. Hell yeah. Uh, Gideon and Gerald both just fucking groan and take their seats. Uh, yeah, you guys can, can sit down, have a nice meal, drinks. Um, Rainer is still like next to you, Aloran, like kind of debating. He's like, so when do you think it's safe to start ribbing him about the leaf belly thing? Because that is. That is just great. Hey, you're on your own there, buddy. Hey, I'm asking you because you 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 know you're in good right now. I I'm still on the shit list. I think. And he yeah, kind of glances at Gerald. To... <laughs> I'm trying to stay in the good. <laughs> I thought we were cool now. We we are cool, but <laughs> I start making fun of them. Hey, guess what? Little halfling ass halfling bitch. It's so Yo, good though. Down. It's so good. This no. like, he's like three feet tall. I mean. It's... It's... If, if there's anyone to say that terrifyingly dangerous things can come in small packages, it would be a Lauren. That's true. I can help you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrifying. Personally, I believe so. 
Okay, if you can land the zinger, then please do, because I just, oh, oh, it's so good. Yeah, because you can say that. You can, like, be jesting, and then I'll be like, yeah, terrifying things come in small packages, and then bam, bear. I can do that at the table. Yeah, I'll do it. Fuck yeah. I'm drunk. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? <laughs> uh, you know what? That sounds fun. Um, although, uh, you did just start seeing him after X number of times, so maybe lay off the zingers just until you get it together again. So, at this point, yes. you guys are sort of at, at your end of the table. Gerald's sort of leaning in, talking to Gideon and Aaron still. They're sort of deliberating even even over this festival meal like that you can tell there's there's a lot of work that they're having to set up and get ready to do you know we'll hold off we, we'll do this once i'm in it you know what i'm saying like <laughs> oh shit like in it <laughs> like in it <laughs> <laughs> gotta lock it down first yeah okay yeah sure sure all right gotta all put right the key in and never take it out <laughs> Put a word in. Put put a good word in for me, because I, you know, he's, he's. I'm sure he's still pissed about the whole thing from last time. Okay. That was a big move, but it's okay. Yeah, no, it was. Just, it, it slipped out. I'm sorry. I. Uh, we're good, right? We're good. Said. Like I, I apologize, right? Like we're out. good. <laughs> Does it slip out a lot, right? <laughs> he goes red. <laughs> he's just like, oh Jesus. <laughs> Your words, not mine, and then I'll say to the Dark Lord, and then think again. <laughs> Hope this becomes the thing. <laughs> the Kudo's just gonna lean over to Noella Burberry and being like, "I have never seen this before." <laughs> I don't think I've seen her have this much before. At least she is not one of those drunks who's like, "Oh, I'm not drunk." You know, I she learned... totally leans into it. <laughs> I've learned to take it as it comes, and as it goes, it's usually That's hilarious. Not... He and she said. <laughs> <laughs> Just Surprise. don't ask her to do any potty tricks. Oh God. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> resisting that temptation. Um, you guys will wrap up your meal over the course of this next hour. Sun will set. It's gonna be totally dark outside. Oh, the sun hasn't set yet? It, it was setting as you were walking. It is now oh. totally set. Oh. It can't be called day drinking if you don't start in the afternoon. Yes. <laughs> that sounds perfectly reasonable to me. I mean, who cares when you're drinking it's the equinox? <laughs> Let's be honest. I, you know what? Well, thank you. Amen to that. <laughs> to the Dark Lord. Dark Lord! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, is there anything that you guys want to do tonight with the, the remainder of your time? Or do you want to wrap up and, and head home? I might try to... If Gerald is not in conversation at all with, like, and he seems to be by himself for a moment, then I might try to talk to him. If not, then I'll probably just say goodbye. So I don't want to, like, impose... Uh, I, think, I think towards the end of the dinner, um, Gerald sort of extricates himself from that that in-depth conversation and tries to kind of segue into this this sort of celebration um it's maybe a little awkward because he's definitely like significantly older than both Rainer and Secundo on his side of the table and like he and Rainer still have that like whole issue still kind of there's a tension there but like y'all are friends, so he's kind of like he's he's more just kind of like listening in and, and chuckling every now and then as you guys kind of pull his Dark Lord thing. Um, but he he's fairly quiet for the remainder of that night uh, and that meal. Um, so if you want to talk to him, like he's disentangled from any any continuous conversation. Then I'll just like chit chat with him a little bit. Too. Yeah. Nothing super serious. Nothing too forward. Maybe. What kind of chit chat? What do you guys talk about? Ask me about work. <laughs> so did you find that tranquil paint? Oh. Yes. How's the tranquil? Oh. Wait. <laughs> hmm. 
I don't even know. <laughs> oh, you guys made the paper. I'll hold the paper up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we did. <laughs> That's some shit. Yes, John fell off a roof. <laughs> yeah. He just fell right on top of him. Dory said he, he like, leapt off of it, and it was like a six-story drop. Kind of, like, starts riffing through the, the article again. It's like, yeah, right here. He's pointing John, at it. They did right by... John, they did right by you. I wish the headline was just, Man falls off roof, crushes wizard. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's basically what wizard. happened. Oh, yeah, it's crushes dark wizard. That's a crushes dark wizard. <laughs> <laughs> or man falls off roof, crushes stalker. Yeah. Yeah. Precious finagler. It was a good <laughs> I take it this was you, the the, the bear. The, uh, me? Bear? Is that you? It seems I was I was the I was the falling guy. <laughs> Am I a bear? I don't know. I had a feeling it was you. I, I, I you know, I was trying to put it together in my head. I figured, you know no. Barnaby over here would have been, you know, kind of sharpshoot at a distance. Yes, I I was the bear. I had to line up a shot, but I didn't want to hit John on the butt. <laughs> he was much easier to kill than I thought he would be. Well, that does kind of happen when somebody flies at you from the third floor. <laughs> you <pins> them down. <laughs> yeah, if you can get the drop on him, it's, uh, it's a lot easier. Yeah, nice. A lot. <laughs> to be God. fair, I usually don't rip people's heads off. It was just a little personal, you know? So I just had to, like... Roll deception. Oh. It was personal. No, she doesn't normally rip people's heads off. She does murder them, but ripping that the heads off... That is not true. Head. She has ripped off more than a handful of heads I've... at this point. Like, one other head. I think we should nickname her Bear Head Ripper. I mean, one head is more than a handful of heads. Half. True. 21. 21. 21? Alright. He doesn't, he doesn't catch on to that. Um... Like nah, that's 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 fair. I mean, it sounds like uh, this guy was giving you guys a, a real headache for a while. Can't say I blame you. He was touching us in his sleep. Yeah, like, nah. Beat him up. And yeah. Kind of like pound the table a little bit with my fist because I'm still kind of mad about it. <laughs> the tiny little triton, uh, the tiny little triton punches the table. It doesn't move at all. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, glad you guys are safe and uh, managed to pull that off without a hitch. That that I could have gone south real bad. Glad it didn't. Yes, yeah. Guys, he'll probably just ask you like how things have been in Freeport since then and what you guys have been up to and all that and just yeah. I'll just tell him I've been working. At an undisclosed location. <laughs> I really learned how to blacksmith. That's a good thing. I, I don't know anything about that. How's that? How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, DM. How's it going? I mean, you got two weeks in. You you know the basic process. Uh, and he's only he's only really just recently kind of let you start like handling metals. Um. Up to this point, it's mostly been like cleaning and observing. Um, so now, now you're you've kind of got an idea for the the pipeline and have, have started actually like operating the forge. So it, you know, the start. Um, yeah, just general basic small talk, yeah. catching up, seeing what's up, um, and I guess. Uh, as the night kind of winds on, Gideon will excuse himself, uh, make his way out of the hall and up the stairs in the foyer, and a little while later, Aaron will also head out and head back onto the yard, taking that hammer with her, and uh, eventually. Oh, when Aaron leaves, I'm mm -hmm. gonna like go after her real quick, and pretend I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, sure, sure. Okay. I'm like, can you show me to the ladies room? Thank you so much. Oh, that alcohol. You don't know where it is at this point. No, oh, of course you know where it is at this point. My bad. 
Yeah. Wait, no, other way. We haven't been in there that many times, to be honest. That's We've true. just been in the one area. No one's ever used the bathroom at the Presidium. <laughs> yeah. It's probably just as run down. <laughs> um, so, you, yeah, chase after Aaron. Uh, yeah, what's up? Um, are we out of the room? Yeah, you you can follow her out of the out of the keep and into the into the the castle gate yard. Okay, then um, I'm gonna give her fifty gold to go towards Gerald's new office. Oh, uh, uh, Lauren, you don't have to do that. It... No, no, no. It's happening. Just take it and just. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna slowly walk away. <laughs> exactly like that too. <laughs> You can see, like, the shoulders kind of relax and slump a little bit, and she just kind of looks at the coin in her hand and looks back at you and says, uh, I, uh, I don't know what we did to deserve the kindness of your party. Thank you. Appreciate it. Think anything of it. Cool. And then as I walk away, I'm going to be like, don't tell him. Blink. Yeah. One metal finger <laughs> collides with the metal faceplate, uh, concealing her face, and she'll make her way back to her workshop. Uh, yeah. The night winds down, and eventually everyone kind of files out one by one, getting ready for bed. Is there anything anyone else wants to do before heading out? I will ask Geralt if he would like to, if he does, ask him if he doesn't want to be alone tonight since he's had such a rough time. <laughs> but in a much more like, not pro prov prov provocative? Provocative? Yes, not provocatively. Just like, genuinely. Uh, you can say no. <laughs> I just want to make sure you're okay. Give me a second. He'll head back into the Great Hall and grab a bottle off the table and come back out. He'll just kind of nod towards the walls and uh, you guys can kind of head up one of the intact staircases up to the uh, battlements and kind of take a slow walk around the, the keep. Uh, and from this vantage point, you've actually got like a pretty good view of the surrounding landscape uh the skies are pretty clear the moon's out so you've got some some moonlight kind of glittering on the water uh around this uh precipice where the keep is built uh and off in the distance to the south you know there's the wide spread of golden lights from freeport uh shining in the air and reflected uh in the waves off its shores <laughs> Stars overhead. Very, very picturesque. Pleasant night. So romantic. <laughs> the I lovely know. equinox. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Gotta say, I am really glad you're glad to be good to see you. <laughs> It's good to see you too. <laughs> Long month. Yeah, I do um, relate to that. Sorry. After after they they start, uh, Noelle, do you actually play anything, or do you also do you just do your poetry? I play the lyre. Do you think you could play something romantic? <laughs> <laughs> uh, would they be able to hear it? Do you? You guys are just like sneaking. <laughs> no, no, no! Like from in, from inside. The I wall. thought you guys like went up a fucking staircase and you're gone. Uh, so they went outside and they're now walking the walls of the the complex. Yeah, the walls. Yeah. You can hear it from from. So if you guys outside or you know. Yeah, if you guys are like sitting on the steps or like out in the yard, you know, sure. playing music. I will go. Uh, I'll go sit on the steps <laughs> in like a typical busking kind of fashion. And uh, <laughs> I will just play something uh, soothing and romantic and uh, kind of melancholy, but 
Give me a performance check. Comforted. Um, fifteen. I think, uh, in the interest of, of maybe not overstepping, you you keep it simple. You keep it um, light, very straightforward, minimal minimal embellishments, like no heavy handedness. Like you're playing very reservedly. Just I resist the urge to break out into a solo. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> no wild bro. romantic flourishes in this. It's just a a familiar metal, melody that you know um, from childhood, maybe, and, and one that speaks to you, and one that you you know very well. And very quietly, this this gentle uh, string music just kind of wafts into the air around the keep. And uh, well, Lauren, with your passive perception, you'll definitely pick up on this. Uh, behind you guys, as you're sort of like uh, circling along the backside of the keep, you can hear the distant sound of, of uh, melancholy, bittersweet lyre music playing. A few moments later, Gerald will hear it, and he'll kind of chuckle to himself. You got some good friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're pretty great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they seem like it. Seems like they've been really helping out around here, too. You know? It's, uh, it's nice to see. It really is. Okay, I'm terrible at this. The whole situation last time with Rainer and all that, last we talked. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've been kind of avoiding that. It's okay. Up to you if you want to talk about it or not. I just don't want to make sure I'm not like in person. Nah, I mean, it... I gotta blow up the handle. That's on me. You know, that's that's my bad. I I, I shouldn't have done that. Um, just yeah, it's, it's it's easier writing stuff down than it is to say it like this. You know, you can actually think about what you're doing make sense of it before you know you commit to giving it to anybody else um but no I mean it, it probably probably should talk about it right like kind of a big deal my uh my former wife now dead wife um god yeah this I don't I feel like I'm already butchering this holy shit uh she was she was a watcher too right we we met in the watch and um she died in the last incursion in uh in Holborn she was there. I think I, I, I think I kind of actually, I, I think I've told you guys about this. Our, my, you know, when we first met, yeah, our, you talked about this. Our thing biggest thing. battle was with that, 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 uh, <clears throat> big fucking demon, uh, controlling the gate. And, uh, we lost a lot of people then in that fight. And, um, Anise was one of them. What was her name? Anise. I appreciate it. Um, 
not trying to bring the mood down or anything to that. Like, it's a party. It's an equinox. I get it. You know, I, I don't want to be like that about it. It's just, you should know. If this is... If this is something that you want to, you know... I think I've made my intentions pretty clear. <laughs> Just checking. <laughs> so, um, that's where I'm coming from. You know, you married for, God, like 30 years. And then she died. And, uh, Another 50, here we are. So. <sighs> that's, uh, that's my story. What about you? Have any, any fun baggage you want to I don't offload now? We can just, we can just rip the band off off all of it you know just just cover it now and, and then we can you know we can um, move on from there i feel like i caused the destruction of my whole village so i'm pretty distraught about that but um i think that's about that is, it that is definitely heavy shit that's fair um yeah. Not what I expected, but that's. I mean, that's still fair. That's still fair. Uh, Relationship wise, no, not not really. Yeah, no, but the the village thing is pretty pretty big. I mean, I I, I saw they he actually holds up the paper again. He's been holding it this whole time. <laughs> um. Uh, they're actually resettling the survivors. Uh, near Helmforth, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Um. At least that wasn't the entire village, you know. There's Elder hates me. Explains everything on me. That's not fair. I mean, no offense. Like I, I know you're a badass bear head ripper type, you know, fighter, but I, I, I don't know if I, I see like a village destroyer. You know, standing here right now, like it doesn't really seem like it's really in your wheelhouse. The the yeah. Every time an expedition's gone down in the hole, something bad's happened. First, uh, my father did it, and now I did it, and uh, just that my my thing froze real bad. That was a hiccup. Okay, everyone good? Yep. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um. Oh, yeah, but my mom and my best friend are still alive, so that helps. Okay. Yeah. Um... Need to get an arm with John. <laughs> Has she? Yup. <laughs> Good for her. That's uh, calculates back at the keep. He's a big guy. Yeah. <laughs> she was very excited the first time she met him. <laughs> Uh, she's a wild one. It's okay. <laughs> he's the wild one. Okay, okay, that that helps. That clarifies. That's good to know. I mean, I guess we're both wild. Us together is like a really bad. Call. Actually, no, not bad. It's the perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're painting a beautiful picture. <laughs> uh. You guys are leaving town, right? Like, uh, yeah. y'all are. We're going to islands. We're going on a vacation away from here, from the white cartel, wherever they might work. Is it because of the Grimes thing? Yup. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotcha. Um, I mean, 
if it helps, you know, I'll, we'll keep our ears open here if we hear anything funny. Oh. Our telly sounding, you know. I mean, not not that we usually do, but Is if it comes up. Check up on the village where my family's moving to? Or just, like, keep, um, like, I don't know. Like, listen out for him. I greatly appreciate that. Because we decided to move them closer just in case some retaliation or something happened. Yeah, yeah. that's that, that makes sense. Um... I can, I, I can step in. See how things are going over there. Yeah, thank you. Do like a, like an inspection, I guess. We don't really do inspections, but we could, we could make one up or something, you know? Yeah. Watch stuff. I yeah, quasits that. in your basements, they're bad, you know? Line your doors with salt, that kind of thing. Check in. Um, any, any time you guys think he'll be back? No. No? I have no idea. <laughs> well, um... Fortunately, I was hoping I'd be here longer than you were, but... Yeah, it doesn't I, seem like... And then I'll be like, out. wait, <clears throat> and I'll be like, oh, I said that out loud. <laughs> Well, to finish... that alcohol? I'm yeah, not here. <laughs> here. Uh, yeah, to finish that thought, I guess. Uh, if you just, you know, if you want to write um, letters are not too hard to get. I'd like to write letters, but like I'm just going to be like hopping around, so I don't really have a place for me to get them. Um... True. That might be kind of hard to reply to, but, um... Yeah, because I just send you messages. So here. Yeah, nah, and you know where we live. Like, if you could send us, just keep us posted where you're at. Make sure you're, you know, we're hearing back from you. If we don't hear anything, you know, we could... If Darren's not back, ask him to take a look on his way back. See where you guys washed up. Hopefully no washing up. Well, you know, worst case scenario here. Oh, Lord. You write home to let Bob know where your body's going to be, right? Oh, God. <laughs> Is that not an expression in your village? No. <laughs> it's bellies up. That's how we die. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's just what we used to say back home, you know. You tell, tell people where you're going to be so they know where to look for your body. Dark, but that's very dark. Okay. It is dark. No, um, yeah. Anyways, um, <clears throat> <laughs> uh, I would appreciate hearing where you're at, where you guys are. If uh, that's okay. Yeah. All right. I would like. To. I would too. Give me a persuasion roll, Alora. If I must, I will use my inspiration. <laughs> this is what it's for. This is what I'm for. rolling for. This is what it's for. This moment. Oh, nope. Inspiration's being used. Ooh. <laughs> that was a bad roll. That was a seven. No. Nope. Bad roll. Oof. It was a nat one. <laughs> oh. I mean, you don't have to take the one. It's still seven yeah. plus persuasion. Yeah. Seven plus persuasion. That's a. Uh... Eleven. Eleven. Okay. Uh, in this pause in the conversation, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is me crying, not a lord. <laughs> Gerald will advantage for the romantic music. <laughs> yeah, do I get advantage? For I mean, that would still just be the seven. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with the eleven, uh. During the lull in conversation, Gerald will just kind of pause and then lean forward and just kind of lightly kiss you on the top of the head. Squeeze your shoulder. Probably should uh, start heading back. It's getting late. We need to sleep for like a whole day or two. Yeah. I could definitely use it. 
he'll uh, walk you back around the battlements and down into the bailey. Good seeing you guys again. You again, especially. Really glad you guys are all okay and they in touch, right? You are unscathed as much as you can be unscathed. Now, at least. Yeah. I was a fucking mess after that fight. Holy shit. <laughs> I need to get a new shirt. <sighs> He's just been walking around in this fucking ripped and slashed and gouged fucking Did tunic this whole time. Did I get to see his, like, muscled, like, chest and arm? Uh... Remember? Yeah, actually. Okay, then I will be like, I don't know, I kind of like it. Wink. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably slightly dehydrated from uh, that trip, and also grimy and smelly and just, like, in bad shape, but fucking cut now, you know? That that dehydration will do it. Um, but yeah. Uh, he'll he'll chuckle at that. And say, yeah. Uh, so, uh, tomorrow, right? Going to Anne Halen. Alright. Guess I'll uh, see you guys here bright and early. Early? Well. I have a hangover this day, boss, man. <laughs> as bright and early as you can the day after the equinox, right? I've had a lot of booze. <laughs> See you tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Deal. And uh, he'll uh, say his goodnights and offer a wave to Noel and Burberry on the steps. Head inside. Burberry is lounging, which looks hella uncomfortable. <laughs> Burberry is lounging. Hella uncomfortable. <laughs> like the kind of lounge that you can see, like, that all of the bits are, like, in the stair. You know what I mean? Sure. Weird, weird sitting position. All, all nested in. Yeah. So. Late. Y'all are drunk. <laughs> Eight uh, for your sales. Some of us. Excuse me. Some of you are drunk. I am only half as drunk as I could be. Another <laughs> thing. I like the way you think. We keep drinking and we get full drunk. <laughs> if it's getting late, I'll probably return to the uh, Green Warden's keep. keep. All right. John's gonna John's gonna accompany Noel. Okay. Uh, so Noel and John will probably head back then. Uh, Burberry and Aloran will stay up drinking. Yeah. And then I'll invite Barnaby to join us. Barnaby, don't you want to watch us get totally shit faced? <laughs> Tell you what, I'll do, I'll do you one better. I will give you some music to play or to listen to. And I will pull out my banjo and just da -da -da -da. sit in the background and watch him. What? No. As he strums his uh, his recycled hubcap <laughs> <laughs> banjo. You did say it was in tune. It is yeah, in tune. It yeah. Tuned. It is in tune. It, it's a shockingly uh, functional instrument for as janky as it looks. Um, yeah. I will begin to give me a performance check, Barnaby. All right. How good is this banjo playing, my boy? Let's see. After this, by the way, I want John to have a conversation with Noel. Mm. Our first one. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, that's pretty pretty decent. That's a fifteen plus one, sixteen. A sixteen. Not too look bad. Look at my performance real quick. Not too bad. Um, I think, uh, Aloran, you'll probably pick up some familiar notes. This this tune isn't actually too far off from the one that Noel was playing, and Barnaby's kind of picked it up and has just twanged it up a little bit, up the tempo. Um, it's kind of jaunty now. This is it's kind of nice drinking music. We're drinking, I'll be dancing, I'm gonna try to get Burberry to dance with. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> um, I feel like Burberry wouldn't have the best coordination. Like every <laughs> every every time he does like the turn, it's it looks like he spun like three or four too many times because he's just like struggling to not fall over. <laughs> How 
How much has Burberry had to drink? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I think if 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 you're like, hey Burberry, how much have you had to drink? He'll be like, I've had. Five, I think. Might have been six. It was seven, I've been counting. Thank you, over from the corner! How many have I had? <laughs> oh. <laughs> At least three. Three? Three is shit-faced, holy <laughs> shit. Three? <laughs> I've been drinking all day. <laughs> I think that means he lost count. Yep. Yeah. Can only get some of the numbers in my head. Okay. He was doing this thing and he's like, well, either either Burberry's had five and you've had three, or Burberry's had eight and you've had some other number. <laughs> I figured which is which. <laughs> so you guys just kind of chill out. Uh, Rainer is probably the last one up. You guys are hanging out, drinking, dancing, listening to music uh, in the great hall of the Presidium Keep. But Barnaby might need to help Burberry get back to the room. Uh, he can walk by, but he, he seems to be, like, tipping. I'm also going to try to help Burberry, but in reality, I'm not helping. I'm making everything worse. <laughs> yes, because you're, like, you're, like, three-fifths of his height. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm doing very, I got you. And then I'm like, oh, no, the world's no, no, no. It's, 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 it's fine. It's fine. It's, wait. It's not. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, tell you what, Burberry, give me a deck save as you're, like, teetering <laughs> home. <laughs> At disadvantage, because you are so drunk. Uh-oh. That looks like a exciting roll. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Ooh. Eight. This is a five and two. Oh, five and a two. Uh, yeah, it's like your mic is cutting out. I couldn't hear anything. Oh, it's, cat. The mic's cutting out. It's whenever I get too high pitched, it can't catch it up anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> so is that um, six? Uh, no, that is yeah, a six, a six, or six. or if if I'm giving myself inspo, which I totally will, a nine. A nine is still not high enough. No, it's an uh, average. It's a uh, that's under ten. Um, <laughs> yeah, Burberry. It is very very hard for you to see straight. Uh, it's very hard for you to keep your balance. Um, you're, you're like waving your arms and like teetering dangerously as you walk and Lauren's not helping apparently she's like ducking out of the way I'm trying to help okay Kira I'm help. trying to help but it's I'm just not helpful <laughs> <laughs> um, and at one point um, I think maybe kind of messing with Burberry and Lauren you kind of like duck out of the way and Burberry like weaves way too far like past you and fucking just like boom wraps himself on a lamppost <laughs> No, I'm not like ducking away. I'm not ducking away. From and you're like, oh shit. No, I'm not ducking away. Like, I'm trying to help support Burberry, but I barely can support myself on my own two feet. Oh. So when I try to like help. I carry... thought you were fucking with him. No, no. Oh. I'm like trying well, to and, actually and, help. And, and, okay, and so instead, we'll just like say you, you, to, like... you lose your grip because Burberry is just fucking toppling. Like past Maybe you, it's just like a dog pile on top of the floor. Yeah, and after I you drag do... Burberry down with me. <laughs> <laughs> like you, just, you guys just go down on top of this lamp post. Like Burberry just fucking <laughs> around it, um, just kind of bending at the waist, like a oh, you know I, cartoon can I, character. Can I, can I, can I make another one her. to like grab the lamp post to not completely fall over <laughs> since I ran smack into it? Yeah. Um. I'm going to say you're going to take a teeny tiny bit of damage. Hit your head. Three bludgeoning damage. Oh, that, that was my nose. That was my nose. Um, the mask so, is a little bent. Alone's is dying of laughter right now. She can't <laughs> stop herself. I feel like so is Burberry. I 
I just wrapped your stuff on a pole. Look, 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 hey, hey, that lamppost came out of nowhere. Was it at least sturdy? I'd say I'm wandering about at this time. Yeah, no, I mean, you guys are walking home together, so I mean, you, you would have seen this this go down in front of you, Barnaby. Right, I'll, I'll just, I'll just be a shoulder. <laughs> oh, big shoulder, both these two. Big strong man. Not as strong as John, but still very strong man. Yeah, that's so strong. I'll just like be poking his muscles, like, oh my god, it's as big as my face. <laughs> <laughs> um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, just, I'm just gonna say a bunch of stuff, stupid stuff on the way. But... So, eventually, you'll catch up to Noel and John, who will have made it back to the uh, keep before you guys, having left earlier. Um, John, you said you had something you wanted to ask Noel about. Yeah, on the uh, trip back, um, John's gonna start up a conversation. Um, so Noel, it, uh, I'm thinking about this, but we really never have talked I feel, um, like, I feel like we've had some chances but we've never really interacted with each other outside of a fight uh, yeah I mean ever since we met I feel like we've just been constantly on the run and then planning and then just never had a moment you know I don't actually know where you're from oh um from Alia it's uh a bit west, uh, kind of past the mountains, and pretty much like right near the middle of Lythor. I've never been past uh, the Homeforth area. Uh, well, it is definitely quite a sight, a very large city, but you know, it's one of those places that when you look at it from afar, it's beautiful, and kind of as you get in there, you realize it's very uh, fake, I guess. There's a lot of uh, people pretending to be people they're not, you know. Sounds tiresome. Yeah. You know, it feels like the more people get into one place, the more complicated it becomes. And I spent a lot of time there and around that area, and I just got kind of sick of it, you know. They all talk like you? A lot of them do. But... uh, it's a pretty big city, so there's a there's a good mix of people there. People that grew up there generally talk like me. Interesting. So what made you decide to go all the way over here? Um, I had a job for a long time, and it was stable, but I had to travel a lot, and... It kind of, it just didn't pay enough that I could, like, do anything, you know? I was kind of stuck in it. Couldn't enjoy traveling? Right. I was saving up a little bit of money every year, but it was just, you know, barely accruing. And finally, uh, circumstances of the job changed enough that I decided that I'd rather try and make my own way. Uh, So I put a bit of that money into... Hiring some guards to escort me across the continent and just get away from all of that. And then I found... What happened uh, to your guards? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I just didn't have the money to pay them anymore. That was when I ended up in Goshefine. Uh. So I kind of used up my nest egg trying to start something new. Which, that's what you're supposed to use it for, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you're just out here looking for adventure and loot? Uh, yes. Hoping to strike it rich? I mean... I, uh... I'll tell you something, John. There's definitely more to life than just gaining money. I mean, you know that. I understand that you put a lot of resources and time into that orphanage, which is incredibly commendable um money would definitely help though yeah i've definitely spent a lot of time learning how to get money and turns out that 
the people who have it are some of the worst people you'll ever meet. So that's not really where my interest lies anymore. Is it the fact that they have money, or is it the fact that they've always had money? I don't know. Part of me thinks it does something to you. But... It's, uh... I don't know. I, I, I feel like there's got to be a sweet spot, right? Like, some people get so much that they could never spend it all in a lifetime, and those ones are ten, tend to be the worst. But... You know, here I am kind of on the opposite end of that spectrum where I could run out of money in a month and starve to death. So, you know, I would not mind finding a middle ground at least, right? I don't know. I feel like as long as you have principles to go along with the money that you have, as long as you don't let the money corrupt you. Well, that's the tricky part, huh? I would like to believe that that's possible, but I have not seen... I have not seen it yet. <laughs> so, anything you're looking for is, uh, on, a, on a disadventure, really? Since you're not really interested in money. I... I don't know. I, that's a tricky one. I just, just came out here for a change of pace. Um, for what it's worth, I, I also grew up in an orphanage, so I definitely, definitely okay. have a lot of respect for what you do, John. Just trying to help him survive. Yeah. I consider, I guess, I haven't had a lot of perspective. I haven't been to a lot of orphanages. The one I grew up in was actually, compared to uh, the one you experienced in your early days, a, a bit nicer. I, I guess I was a bit lucky in that regard. So, I definitely want to help send a little money their way when I can. Well, I definitely appreciate it. <laughs> Speaking of money... I'm thinking about getting a crossbow before we leave for this trip. Do you sell those at that uh, place you've been working? Uh, I'm sure they could make one. I don't know if they have any in stock right now, but I could ask tomorrow. I would appreciate it. Especially if you could give me a discount. <laughs> <laughs> Are you good with your I'll boss, try. or is he still pissed at you? Well, no, he's, he's been a little iffy with me since I took a couple days off. Yeah, well. I guess uh, I'll just cross my fingers and see. Maybe he'll let me make it. See if that'll give, a, give us a discount on that. <laughs> that would be an interesting experiment. As long as you make sure it doesn't, like, misfire and hit me in the face or something. <laughs> <laughs> I just love the idea that John comes to Noel with a crossbow and it's like the jankiest fucking slingshot. <laughs> the it's arms impossible are impossible like... to hold it without getting a splinter. Yeah, it's like badly <laughs> sanded, like the arms are all fucking janky and twisted. <laughs> like it's my first, it's my first weapon. I finally finished it. I want oh, you to have it. Thank you. I, I like to, so I like to nice. think it's John has. I like to think John still has a sense of proportion. So it comes out as a. a it's as even a bigger than the one I have. Size. It's way too big, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fucking a beautiful visual. <laughs> I mean, that would be an interesting, like, way of seeing John's progression is, like, he just keeps taking the same crossbow back and making it slightly more functional as the campaign was on. By the end of the campaign, he gives Noel a functional 45 gold piece heavy crossbow. <laughs> I cannot Player's use this. Player handbook regulation. I get it. You don't even have to roll for misfires on that once. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I'll uh, I'll talk to the I'll talk to the blacksmith I'm working with. <laughs> See what I can work out, I guess. I would appreciate it. I am excited to go on these uh, islands, though. I think like getting away from all of this 
craziness will be a positive thing for all of us. I don't know why, but I still want to go to Daggermore. <laughs> I know you do. We'll see. I mean... Like, we're going there's to no see. real reason. I just want to go there. It's just a cool name. I mean, right? Is, is there a dagger less? That, that yeah, I don't yes. think so. Never said that. That's the outskirts of Daggermore. <laughs> 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 so it's good to have a conversation it's yeah fun. it was good talking to you I, I I promise that I'm not trying to be rude if I'm quiet I just try to uh, I try to only talk if I feel like I have something to contribute you know I uh, I've just been pretty alone most of the time so I don't really talk very much no. You seem like you have a good head on your shoulders. <laughs> and a good... I mean, a good six-pack. As long as I'm not in a fight. Yeah. You know, I... Uh, I've debated bringing this up before to all of you, but... Just so you know, I'm... I'm sorry about the whole dagger thing. For real. I know that doesn't make up for anything. <laughs> no, it's, I, it's not something you really have to apologize for. I mean, we ended up stopping Willem from being evil, and uh, nobody died. We got hurt. Lauren went through a little psychological pain, but that's, you know, par for the course. Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that you're so light about it, but... I really, really feel bad. Uh, honestly, I I feel worse about the, the getting you guys involved with the, the white cartel versus <laughs> the dagger ceiling thing. So, well, maybe we're both just terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's terrible, maybe unlucky. <laughs> Well, no, I made a terrible decision. I own that. Oh, no. We could, ne we could never have guaranteed that Willem wouldn't have backstabbed us. You taking his dagger dis uh, disconvenienced him enough that he, that he came died. after us. And, uh, and uh, came after us to the point where he died. Yeah, I, I'm very glad it's behind us, but... I, I don't know. I just feel like every time I do something, I make everything worse. I'm glad he's not running the drug cartel. Would have probably been worse for him for us. He did seem like someone who had a grand vision, so maybe things will get gummed up for a while if he's gone. That's, I guess, a small victory. Only we could have stolen all the gold out of that bag. <laughs> Well, maybe on the islands we'll earn enough gold that uh, that bag will seem like nothing to us. I don't know, that's White Cartel's bank right there. Yeah, well, I'm kind of glad we don't know uh, exactly how much we lost out on. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Lauren says from afar, oh. thinking of money. <laughs> I did have a question. Are we going to be bringing our horses with us to the islands? We want to pay for them. That's a question for the captain, probably, because I don't know how convenient a horse actually is on the islands. I don't know if there are roads or trails or anything. I'm sure we could, I'm sure we could either lend them to the Adventurers Guild or the Watch or um, sell them. Well, I need to go to the captain tomorrow to confirm uh, our trip and I need to go to the academy with the gate watch so I will have answers uh, by the end of tomorrow okay I'll work on the uh, hand cross for time perfect thank you uh, let's take our break here it's almost 10 
Seems like a good spot. We'll pick back up after everyone has had their long rest and proceed in the morning. Perfect. John and Noel's first we actual did it. We can be friends. It now. happened. It only Yay. took 19 sessions. Bravo. <laughs> Noel and John, the quiet people talked. Yay! Yeah, it's like you get the two quiet people in the party and <laughs> to, to finally talk. That is uh, 74 hours of gameplay. <laughs> and we had our first conversation. <laughs> the first one on one. I mean, it's not like we haven't Noel. talked before, but this is the first solo conversation. The first, yeah, the first one on one between Noel and, and John. Hopefully, not the last. See you in 74 hours, John. <laughs> I don't know that me and Barnaby have had one either. You and Barnaby have tons. Yeah, you and Barnaby have tons of support. All right, I'm going yeah. to break.
Another chat. We're back. You guys all made it back to the green keep in one piece. Yeah. Slept off your hangovers. Mostly sleeping in tomorrow. The 16th of Inanama. What's on the agenda um, today? Manamana. Manamana. Okay. First yeah. order of business. Quick question for the party. When do we want to leave? I need to know that before I go talk to the captain. How many days from now? Like two? One? Three? But how, how long before? How long was it before I get proficient with blacksmithing? Was it a month? <laughs> no, it's like ten weeks. Ten weeks. Ten, okay. I just wanted weeks. to make like yeah. if I was a couple of days off, I'd be like, okay, can we hang on a couple? Of At days? this but, point, I think you would have had um, a week and a half ish. No, I think it's like two weeks now. Two weeks. You've been yeah. you've, you've you've had this under your belt. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, does it scale to the current weeks of the calendar, or is it seven days worth of work? Like a normal D and D week. That's a good question, actually. Oh, is that um, bad? You've doomed us. I believe so I sidetracked the whole session. <laughs> oh, you it'd, it'd be seventy days based off ten weeks. So seven weeks normally. So it'd be seven weeks in this world. E... What is a, a work week? And five e. There's no weekend. Five days, eight hours a day. Oh. Okay. There so um So one week is two weeks. If you don't take a day off. Which I haven't been. You had two days off at least. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> and probably the equinox. Wait, didn't the two weeks happen after we had dealt with the Willem stuff? So technically when he took his days off it wasn't during his work week? It was just like another two weeks. Sure, yeah, so it would be two weeks and like some change. So like two weeks and like three days or something. Because you guys so be actually, I took records. To you guys got back to uh, Freeport on the 52nd. Uh, John would have started his apprenticeship on the 53rd. And he had like two days off uh, between then and Willem's ambush. So it would have been one, two. Oh, plus the day we went to uh, Helmbert. Three, four. Yeah, that's right. I feel like maybe we shouldn't figure this out mid session. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll do... Basically, I'm I'm several weeks off. So it sounds like it. Yeah, it's a ways off. We um, we can figure that out after session. I just wanted to know if I was a couple of days off or a couple of weeks off. I will make a note of that. Uh, John Blacksmith days. Um, also, just because I'm super. So I'm, I'm, go ahead. I was gonna say I'm fine to go whenever. I just need to a couple of days ahead of time so I can let the blacksmith dude know that I'm leaving in a couple of days or something. Few days notice. Okay. Few days notice. Any preferences? Like the fifth? Is that fine? Well, today is the sixteenth. I'll just be like, how oh, right, long do you want to yep. postpone? <laughs> do what? I said, however long you want to postpone. No biggie. I mean, I'm eager to get going, to be honest. So, uh, I don't want to cut your time with Gerald short, of course, but uh, I'm more yeah, asking, no. how long do you want to hang out with him before we go? I don't know. Whatever the party wants to do, out. You guys have waited this long for him to return, so I won't keep us here. All right. If it's the sixteenth, then let's plan to leave the twentieth. How about that? Hopefully, I can reserve the captain for that day. I'll do my best. Four days enough to make this ringing go away. Mm. Hopefully. Wait, can I use... Burberry tries stupidly to cast Lesser Restoration on himself to make the hangover go away. I believe that will cure poisoning. <laughs> that actually does. I think that works. Yeah. But yeah, that will actually help you. Oh, for, yeah, no, I'm For a, a second level spell slot, uh, Burberry, you cure your hangover. <laughs> I'm good to leave whenever. It should be fine. Oh, wow. Ah. You look so much better now, all of a sudden. Why, thank you. Your uh, your eye, as always, is impeccable. 
Well, do you want to uh, come with me to talk to the captain, or to go to the academy, or we could split up? Up to you. I'll follow you everywhere. Same as old times. <laughs> Alright. Uh, cool. Well, since I assume the gate watch is going to be sleeping in a little bit, I'm going to go to the captain, who is probably up right and early. Okay. Uh, it has been about two weeks since you last spoke with Captain Dermond. Uh, let's see if he's in town right now, shall we? Okay. It's, if it's not him, it's Archie Gardner. He... Bitch, I closed it. Now I have to find it again. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I put it in the uh, the Discord. Oh, the the timetable thing. Yeah. He is not in town. Okay. Unfortunately. Uh, so. Then I will go find the, the frizzy-haired, uh, tri-corner hat-wearing Archie Gardner. Mr. Gardner. Um, he... Wait, you said a tri corn hat? A tri-corner. Tri-corner. That's no, nice. Oh, cast locate object for tri corn hats in the area. <laughs> tri-corner. <laughs> Make sure you get that right. A tricorn hat is very different. I mean, it's it's what you imagine, not what you say. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm just imagining um, having three things with corn on it. Three, three, three cobs of corn. Three cobs of corn. Yeah. The the tricob hat. <laughs> um. It's it's funny, you know. You you would think on a wharf full of sailors and ships, you would feel you know, more than this one singular ping <laughs> that goes off. Um, however. However, you do feel a pull in one direction down the Iron Wharf, uh, kind of roughly in the, the same general direction as, as uh, Willem's old warehouse. Um, not nearly that far down, but it's, it's sort of heading in that direction um, sort of northwest along the southern side of the uh, the, the peninsula. Um, and you find yourself standing in front of this uh, fairly light two-masted schooner. Um, it does not look like it's a very large ship. Uh, it's just looking at it probably like a single level uh, underneath the main deck um, where the hold is. Uh, and um, pretty small crew, and very clearly you can see standing uh, at the head of the gangplank, um, sort of directing uh, the movement of cargo uh, out of the hold uh, and sort of queuing more crates uh, off to the side to be loaded on. Uh, there is this tall, thin man. He's wearing uh, this very nicely... Uh, sort of pressed and cleaned um, white blouse, very billowy, uh, ruffled cuffs, uh, sort of rough under the chin, um, real sparse beard, very frizzy, kind of flyaway red hair. Uh, looks like it's almost like a like kind of a, a, an afro underneath the hat. Um, big hook nose. Uh, and this just gaudy costumish looking tricorner hat it's like really vivid purple ribbon kind of ruffling along uh the rim of the hat there's like one of those like costume almost like brooch gemstones kind of set on one side of it humongous set of feathers uh flaring out over the back of this thing uh you know from counter to I... the counter to the flamboyant appearance of this captain uh he has kind of a shrill bark of a voice <laughs> as he is directing his crew around he's like come on folks we need to be out of port within two hours we've got a timetable to keep let's move come on go 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 uh very like no nonsense uh despite his seeming youthful uh 
exuberance uh, in his dress. Uh, and yeah, walking up, uh, he will catch sight oh, of you guys. He's He'll be like, kid who just thought that that's what people wore. <laughs> well, he's got a recommendation, so hopefully not. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gardner. Uh, yes, that's me, Captain Gardner. Hello. Hi. Could we talk to you for what a moment? For you? Uh, sure. Make it quick. You guys know where that. Get that down below deck. Thank you. Uh, Hi. Sure. What's uh, what's up? Yes, I'll make it quick. Uh, my name is Noah. This is my associate Burberry. We are just looking to charter a ship. Hopefully, in the next couple of days here. And we're hoping to get to Feral. What's it called? Feral. Feral. Yes. Yes. Um. You. We got you a recommended... recommendation by Captain Dermond to seek you out. Dermond, good man. Uh, Feral in a couple of days. Uh, we were thinking the nineteenth or twentieth, if possible. He starts thinking about it. Um. It may be a day or two after that. I'd have to my, double check my timetable. We're about to take a trip up to Illicol, but uh, we'll be back in Freeport after that. Uh, so if you can be ready by then, actually, give me five minutes. I'll go check our ledger. And uh, he's going to fucking, without another word, out of you guys, just like off the gangplank. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, like pushing past his crew into the captain's quarters uh, and just disappear inside for a moment. Um, while I check my notes. So give me a second. Okay. <laughs> Seems to be quite to the point, this one. Yeah, well. Uh, hopefully he sails as efficiently as he talks. I don't think that's possible. <laughs> but hopefully he gets near it. I guess we'll find out. <laughs> After these messages. <laughs> so. Uh... I kind of hope that I get another ding on Tricord Hats that's just a gift shop. <laughs> there's like a gift shop next to the wharf. Yeah. Alright, there's one there and 30 there. That must be the Tricord Conventions in town. <laughs> it's three days. I have a bad I've heard this new fad called Steampunk. <laughs> oh, it's so gaudy. <laughs> Uh, so he is going to come out of his quarters uh, carrying a small book and a pen uh, and kind of hurry down the gangplank towards you guys. It's like, okay. So uh, the trip up to uh, Warnala, it looks like that's going to be about five days out, and then it should be a little faster coming back. Um, heading to, uh, say... Ture, and then from Ture back to Freeport should be uh, less than. Right. Um, and we do the 24th. That's, uh, sure, that's fine. Okay, 24th. I can definitely pencil you in. How many people are coming? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, is there... You would know you've been to the islands. Is there any reason to bring horses to the islands? Mm, he kind of winces. I don't disembark much. Uh, I will say I don't often carry horses. Uh, they are generally not very agreeable cargo on a ship of our size. Uh, I kind of glance back at the Nancy. Uh, Fair point. I would imagine if you have need of them, you could probably rent some. That's a good idea. Um, yeah, we, we have horses, but uh, I didn't know. We're going to Faro, and I know it's not a particularly large island. I didn't even know if it would be worth it. So, uh, I won't lie to you. I have not been very deep into Faro myself. Again, I, I generally keep to the ports. Uh, Do you know just but... based on how, all the sailing you've done, just like how long would it take to walk from one end to the other? A uh, couple of days. Okay, that's not bad at all. It's not a big island. And what do you charge for this uh, trip? Uh, five silver a day. So to Feral, uh, you're looking at 15 silver per passenger. That's not bad at all. Perfect. Cheaper than three days on the ferry. <laughs> but how much is it? Five silver Sorry. per person per day. It's three days. Yep. Correct. So we just all have to and how much are the horses, or are we not taking the horses? I don't think we need to take the horses. I so... think they would just make things complicated. I'll be honest with you. 
five people seven, and five, five horses seven. would eat up a decent amount of our cargo hold. I believe it. So we need seven and a half gold. I mean, we each pay, you know, a gold and a silver, or a gold and five silver. Uh, okay, well, we will be. Do you, what time and uh, when do you intend to leave? Like in the morning or? We should be back at port on the night of the 23rd, weather permitting. He's kind of looking over his ledger. Uh, ideally, then, we will have unloaded and we can load our cargo and you to, on the morning of the 24th. So if you could be here, uh, the earlier the better, um, after sunrise, um, definitely before noon. All right, last question. Um, is there anything that you would recommend to someone who's never sailed to bring with them? I'd stop by an apothecary. Yeah. If you don't know what the sea will agree with you, it would be best to have <laughs> something on hand for that. See, that's the kind of thing I wouldn't think about. Burberry's just fucking nodding. I won't lie, I've cleaned up more than my share of it, and I am pretty done with it. So, if you could, please, uh, in the event of spillage, keep it off the ship, over the sides. Look out a window. <laughs> we will do our best. Thank you very much, and uh, much appreciated. safe travels. Yes, we will see you in a week. He'll uh, extend a hand and shake. I'll shake his hand. Okay. All right, well, that's one thing take, uh, taken care of. And then we'll start heading to the gate watch. All right, cool. Uh, so catching up with uh, the Presidium, uh, gate watch about an hour later. You'll be on that side of town, and uh, Gerald will uh, meet you guys at the gate. Um, looked like he had just been kind of keeping watch on the wall, and as you approached, he kind of vanished from view and emerged out of the gate. All right. <sighs> Morning. Everybody feeling all right? Uh, I think we're fine. How did you want to do this, Gerald? You said you guys knew a guy. All right, so, I mean, um, how do you want us to present you? I mean, honestly, I mean, I'm gatewatch. There's nothing to hide. It's just... Well, is there something to hide just in case it's going to mess things up? <sighs> like, could we just say, hey, our friend wants to send a message. Can you do that? Like, it doesn't have to be complicated. We don't have to drag baggage into this. It's okay, one sending if, spell. If... If if you see that need, then by all means, I, I look. The academy's decent people. I'm I'm Gideon's being very very weird about it. It's just pressures in town. It's not a big thing. It doesn't have to. You're right. It doesn't have to be a big thing. We can just we can just go. All right. All right I'll let's just you, go see. Take, hopefully we can find. Maybe he's not even there today. You know, whatever. We'll find. It, we'll it, it could out. be off. Shit. Yeah. Oh, by the way, we are leaving the 24th. I don't know if you wanted to know that. Just got it locked in. That's good to know. Oh, Lauren, I assume you're here for this. Yes, and I'm, yeah. I'll, I'll waggle my eyebrow at him. <laughs> Just the whole walk. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, Is your brow getting tired? <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts I got a brow. There we go. So, uh, crossing town again. Uh, <laughs> I get, you've got horses if you want to take the horses. Yes, I imagine Bramble I'll get on my horse and I'll slap behind me and be like, that <laughs> <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> All right. He'll whoosh up onto the horse from behind and uh, <laughs> just behind you. Cool. Um, yeah, you guys can ride off to the Anna Halen Academy. Uh, and as you guys approach the campus grounds, uh, go ahead and give me a perception check. Wow, my dice are so mad at me today. I rolled in that one. Oof. I got a 15. Berber, Berber you hit another lamp pole because you're not looking where you're going. <laughs> no, thankfully I'm on a horse. The horse just barely dodges. They close lines. You know they got those crossbars? <laughs> On, on the at the top of the lamp, the pole. horse dodges to the left where the crossbar is. <laughs> right, <laughs> you're like not even looking. It's like, oh my hat. 
Um, I rolled in that one as well. So do I hit the pole as Hopefully well? Hopefully a 15 catches them. <laughs> There's like a pile up at this lamp. <laughs> like the horse like stops after Burberry like heals to grab his hat. And you guys aren't looking where you're going. She like kind of like hit the other horse and there's a... Barnaby got a 12. Barnaby got a 12. Okay. Yeah. Noel, anything? 15. 15? Okay. What uh, is thankfully that, that was enough. Noel, um, 15 will do it. Uh, <laughs> you do catch sight of the uh, Professor Springbell, the man in question, uh, whom you spoke with uh, previously. He is currently uh, sitting on a bench <coughs> with a book in hand uh, and what looks like uh, a wrap in the other hand. He is just kind of slowly working his way through like a cup of hot tea on the bench next to him. Yeah, it's early in the day. Hopefully he still has spell slots. Um, Mr. Springbell? Professor? Hmm? Uh, hi. You oh, talked to you hello. Day. He, uh, he waves to you guys and closes his book. It's good to see you again. Please. I, I was a little worried. Uh, you said you would be back the next day to uh, send another message to your mother, Mr. Barnaby, and I never heard from you again. We've been pretty busy. Yeah. We got a bit busy. Oh. Uh, well, apologies. did you want to um, send that message now? Possibly. Um, we have a friend of ours, actually, who may need to employ your services as well. I'll gesture mm. to Gerald. He'll uh, extend a hand. It's like uh, Professor Springbell in Helen Academy. He's like, Gerald, get... <clears throat> I look at him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I have one very credible source that says otherwise. <laughs> um, pleasure to meet you, Gerald Gay. Yes. Yes, it is. I'm going to try to, like, I'm going to muffle, like, I'm going to do a little laugh cough. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what manner of message did you need to send? Uh, I've got a friend, Durin, who's been out of town for a while, and I was hoping maybe you could get a hold of him and uh, let him know that uh, he is missed and needs to come home soon. You hope he comes back soon. Um, fair enough, I suppose. Um, I guess this is fairly urgent, then. Uh... Could you describe Mr. Durin for me? Um, try and get me a picture in his head. In my head. I guess we could do the thing like yeah, last I, time. I can help. Sure. Uh, okay, sure. I guess um, uh, he's a little bit shorter than me. Not by much, though. Uh, Want to start white... off with what race? Oh. Yeah, like he's he's race he's, and he's, hair he's, color and skin color and those we gotta start somewhere. Uh, pale skin, silver eyes, um, very like fair complexed. Um, as he goes, I'll just start shifting things yeah. and um, we'll, over the course of a couple of minutes, try and work this. Over out. the course of this description, uh, the figure that sort of materializes in front of you guys, uh, very similar to Rainer, um. He's got the same sort of uh, short, cropped white hair, uh, grown out a little longer, it sounds like, than, than Rainer keeps his. Um, very stylish. Uh, he's got uh, a narrower face, um, taller than Rainer and a little more slender, uh, but shorter than Gerald still. Um, and he has a, a very uh, sort of um, it, it takes Gerald a while to kind of get this out because it, he's kind of dancing around the quality of it. Uh, but there's, there's a sort of debonairness to this figure by the time uh, you guys sort of finally hone in on like, that's him. That's, that's, the, that's the smirk. That's the, that's it. You nailed it right there. Uh, the dream work um, smirk. Yeah. He's... <laughs> He's a very, very handsome-looking man. And this is what um, he would look like in a bodice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
That is quite the visual, actually, now that you mentioned it. Um, and, uh, yeah, he'll, he'll go on to describe Durin. Uh, he is very, uh, sort of counter to Gerald's sort of somewhat awkward, uh, demeanor around people. He's, he's very much a social creature, uh, kind of strikes you as the sort of person that Rainer almost kind of tries to be and just fucking fails at every time. Like he's, Aww. he's out there. He's very outgoing. He's, he's very like loud and central and uh, attention grabbing, but very likable, um, Rainer engaging. Just wants to be like his big brother. Starting to, starting to paint Aww. that picture. Uh, and uh, it kind of caps it all off with this. Uh, his, there's a, a coolness, a reservedness to this uh, to this guy, um, in spite of all that. You know, a uh, a laid back relaxed attitude that it just kind of caps the whole thing off. Um, but it all comes out in just like garbled Gerald mumble nonsense. Um, so it takes you like another 10 minutes to get this all fucking described and ready. Uh, and eventually uh, Springbill will just kind of hold up a hand. He's like, I, I, I think I, I have a decent idea. Thank you, you asked me to change the nose one more time. No, no, no. The <laughs> The nose is you got you got you nailed the face. I'm just talking like his person. No, I got the personage. You've, you've I think you've said enough. I I think I can do this. <laughs> what do you want me to tell him? Uh, yeah, just tell Durin. Um, Chaser went bad. Uh, I'm inactive. We need help. Please come home. Hurry. Springwell looks a little disconcerted, but. Nods, cast a spell. See if this description was adequate. Okay. And uh, we'll recite the uh, message that um, Gerald has transcribed for him. And waits a moment as he receives his reply. He says, Well, this sounds like Doran. Um, he says. Uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, trouble in Landor right now. Uh, has kept most of his attention this past month. He'll come when he can. And, uh, Gerald's just... Alright, well, I guess we did what we could. It's something better than nothing. I appreciate it, Stringbell. And uh, he will pull some coin out of his pocket and offer it. Stringbell's like, oh, um, thank you. The uh, Academy will definitely appreciate this. I, I remember how you guys work, so appreciate it. Again, thank you. Of course. Uh, so, Mr. Barnaby. Yes? Did you want to send another message to your mother? I mean, if you if you got time, there's not too much hassle to you tonight. I'm not teaching today. I am well currently on lunch. Uh, but after that, going back to do uh, some more uh, research. So I'm um, not exactly planning on doing a whole lot of uh, demonstrations this afternoon. So if if you are uh, looking to send a message, I so should. <laughs> If I don't get back to her, she's gonna send one of the boys out. That'll not be good, I'll put it that way. Well, I, I would hope for them to suffer the same fate that you did, Mr. Barnaby. Well, alright, let me write up a message real quick, Lark. Alright. So, as Barnaby composes his second missive to his mother, uh, I'll shift back to normal. Okay. Anything uh, you guys want to do while you're at the academy? 
kind of looking around the grounds, nice open green fields, and I guess while, while small trees. David's writing. I'll just say, um, what kind of research are you doing, Professor? Uh, historical work. I am um, currently working on a paper uh, regarding the uh, intersections of uh, certain um, parallel planes to uh, the prime material. So um, it's been uh, it's been enlightening. It's been enlightening. I've I've learned a lot. <laughs> A new field for me. I, I'm not usually one for planar studies, but um... it is uh, well beyond anything I know anything about. Well, so much of it is like so theoretical. I'm finding. Uh, I, I'm honestly a little uh, puzzled by the lack of primary sources on the matter. You know, I, there's so many accounts of you know ancient Illyrian uh, ships. You know, sailing out into the astral sea, visiting other planes, but um, it's all secondhand. You know, there's 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 almost nothing in the library here, or almost anywhere else in the city that I've been able to find. Uh, I mean, recounting that would be very their old, actual right? voyages. A, a lot of that information may have just been lost to time. I mean, four hundred years old isn't terribly oh, old. I guess it's and... not as old as I thought. <laughs> I mean, here that's that's you know closer to eight hundred ish in Earth years, but okay. that's oh, that's pretty old. Then. It's that's a decent amount of time for sure, but um, not a millennia. Not quite. No. Uh, I. It's a little frustrating, is all well, you know. I, I'm I'm finding more and more that uh, my um, avenues are somewhat curtailed by powers beyond my control. He kind of. It would not surprise me if some of the things you are looking for are locked up in some powerful mage's library or something. It is the impression I'm getting, at least. It seems that uh, most primary sources are being kept very carefully guarded out west. <laughs> well, oh. Is there a big. Uh, why out west? What's out there? Uh, well, in a guard. <laughs> ah. For starters. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He kind of grimaces. It's a shame, really. You know, my folk came to Vergos uh, a little later than uh, many of the el other elven houses, but um, seems we were too late to really get a good footing. I'm sorry. I don't mean to grouse. Yeah, have, have you had a all right equinox? Did you guys enjoy the celebrations yesterday? Uh, yes, um, we had a lot of fun with our friends, and, uh, some of us got very drunk. Excellent. At very least one of us. It was fun. <laughs> I assume that's something that, uh, your students probably get up to as well. Oh, we definitely see our fair share of, uh, <laughs> absences, or we have in the past at least. We've just taken a call of the day after a, a <laughs> I was going to freebie. say, so many would probably just say they're sick that day. Why even uh, have well, classes? Exactly. He kind of looks around and is like, it's our um, very quiet day here today. It's nice having the campus yourself. Though, <laughs> it's like a teacher's you know? snow day. If it snowed around here, exactly, uh, yes. I guess, but I, I don't think I would even have been in a place where it snowed, would I? It would snow in Aelia, yeah. Oh, okay, is it so, is far enough south? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, inland snow is more common. Um, yeah. Out on the coast, especially this far north, um, you would not expect to see snow, except in a you know, freak freeze. Um, All right, Barnaby, I bought us some time. Some question. Oh, damn, I'm a little tiny. <laughs> no, I know, Fact I was up. like, oh. up. I, nope, it's, it's, it's not there. Ignore it. Oh, no, I just I, missed I, it. I'm just catching up on the whole thing because I was talking. Can I, I'm going to ask a, ask him if he knows anything go. about, like, the Diapelion. Diapelion. Yeah, hold on. Uh, I am a passing familiarity. It's, it's never been a subject of study. Um, is there anybody that has studied it? 
I could certainly ask. Um, anything specific that you're interested in? Creatures that live in it? Mm. Or rumors of creatures? That, um... That I am quite confident is actually uh, something there is not a lot of research on. I was actually reading a couple of weeks ago uh, last story that the Chronicle ran about the uh, Warden's expedition out there. Oh. I, believe, I believe the survivors are being relocated in, in the next week or so here. Um, but they've been sending expeditions out there for a decade now, trying to study the area, uh, from what I understand. Um, I don't imagine there's anyone over <laughs> at our small academy that uh, knows more than the Warden's foot on that matter. Now, history, however, I might be able to find you something on that, but uh, I'll have to ask around, of course. So, uh, Mr. Barnaby, you have been waiting very patiently there. Do you have a message? <laughs> yep. Yeah. I got it all written, and I hand him a piece of paper. All right. So, uh, looking through chat here, uh, he will adjust his little glasses and say, uh, all right. Sending to Mrs. Barnaby. Uh, hey, Ma, it's Barnaby again, only 25 year words. Sorry for the late reply. Apparently gone for five years. What did I miss? Row three. He will sit back and wince at the reply. Oh, yep, she got him. <laughs> yep. Nope, she heard you. Um, well, uh, she said that, uh, you've missed quite a lot. Families come together, uh, and you've missed the birth of several grandbabies. Uh, where are you? That's going to be a whole nother uh, tongue whipping. Uh, Tell you that. I'm afraid it might be, yes. Um, I'm afraid I likely only have one more of these in me for the day. Uh, if it needs to, be good to go to some more pressing matters, we can wait a day or so. Well, if uh, you want to try and work out a, a more long distant or long form communique with her, I, I could probably send her some messages over the following weeks or so. Try and slowly get that out there. I must say, it, it is the strangest position you found yourself in, Mr. Barnaby. I've been finding myself yeah. about it more and more. It's uh, something I'm still coming to terms with myself. Very peculiar. Part of what actually prompted my current um, avenue of research. Um, <clears throat> truth be told. Uh, yes, if, if, you, if you have anything else you want to tell her, um, you could just leave me a letter. Maybe I could I could start kind of working my way through it. Over time. Good idea. Bless you. Good Bless you. Um, that may be for the best, because I'm sure she's got a lot of names. A lot of, a lot of youngins mean lots of names. Also, she's probably got a few names she'd want to call me. Fair. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, if... Uh... You do figure it out. Um, you know where to find me. Yeah. I will. I will write something up for you. I will be here. <laughs> we appreciate it as always. Of course. Well, I will uh, finish this off and get back to work then. Um, you all enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and um, 
Safe travels. You as well. Thank you once again, and uh, any of the insults Ma gives you, they're meant for me, so don't think anything of it. I she's, can, a, she's a bit harsh. I and I mean by a bit, I mean a lot. Family, don't tell her I said that, though. Family can have its own idiosyncrasies. Uh, it's, it's, it's fine. It's totally fine. She seems like a fiery woman. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll see your message. Time. Yes. Take care. So, uh, departing the academy, is there anything else you guys have that you want to tackle? I get to go stop by the blacksmith to see if I can get a hand crossbow for hand a reasonable crossbow. price. <laughs> so, uh, John asking your boss about this hand crossbow situation. Um, this smith does not primarily work uh, in weapons uh, or armor, as, as I've mentioned. He is more of a tool and uh, fixture uh, blacksmith. Uh, hinges, locks, lock components, I should say, you know, hardware um, and Metal tools are, are more his his uh, wheelhouse, but he knows people uh, that he can direct you to who are uh, more adventurous in their 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 smithing work. Um, folks who work with you know the CEA uh, here in Freeport and and who also sell to um, Staylers and the like. So um, getting a hold of a crossbow will not be difficult. Um, I'll be honest, that was 100% what I was planning to do. <laughs> David. Good. He just uh -huh. he just linked me the hillbilly name generator. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good name generator. That's awesome. Uh, Am I able to persuade him to make, uh, to give it cheaper or help out in the construction to make it cheaper? I'm going I'm to I'm ask you for a persuasion check here because one, this is not his crossbow that he's selling. This is going to be a, a friend that he's kind of connecting you with to make this sale. Oh. Um, and two, uh, you have been doing good work with him um, for the past couple of weeks since you haven't really had your time off uh, really interrupting the flow of, of your apprenticeship anymore. So, just a straight roll. Uh, wait, plus persuasion or no? Not persuasion. Just persuasion, but no, no advantage, no disadvantage. Oh, okay. Um, that's a 15. How much? 15. 15? Okay. Um, he kind of hems and haws. He's like, I'll, I'll see what I can do. No, no promises. Of course. Um, I'll say he'd be will or the by the time like Noel gets there and and you know you guys are kind of able to go talk to this other smith uh, who's selling the crossbow, um, he's willing to knock off ten gold for a friend. Okay. Okay. So how sense. much is that now? So for a hand crossbow, that will be sixty-five gold pieces. Okay. Uh, would I get anything if I traded in my current one? Uh, what sort of crossbow was that? It was just one of the ones off Wilms Man. Is it heavy or light? Oh, light crossbow. Light crossbow. Uh, he'll kind of take it and look it over. And th this is um, uh, a uh, older dwarvish uh gentleman who's got like a real fucking scruffy <laughs> chin strap beard. It's just kind of like. Like just shoots out in every direction instead of like falling softly, you yeah. know, like it should. Um, real wiry, bristly hair. As you can see, this um, one's a little bit big for my hands. Uh, it's a good size, though. I'll take a look. He's like, it's a little beat up. They don't look like they're oiling these either. Uh, I could knock another, mm, another ten off. What do you think? Fifty-five. I could do fifty-five. 55? All right. Sounds like a fair trade to me. I can fix this up. So, cool. 55 no, gold pieces, and you now have a hand crossbow. No, do you need any help gold-wise? 
No, I got 55 gold. You've been busking. Yeah, so that'll be good. Only other thing is that I had on my kind of to-do list is um, he said uh, uh, the captain said to go talk to like a uh, alchemist or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, is there anywhere where like say uh, uh, apothecary? That's the word I'm looking for. Is, is there like any apothecary that also just has like curios and random shit? Because I I would want to possibly look into some kind of anti nausea or something. As well as, <laughs> I always forget to do this in campaigns, and I'm finally remembering this time. I want to buy a compass before we go adventuring. A very compass. wise decision. Okay. So okay. I could see like an apothecary with like a bunch of random knickknacks, maybe or something. I don't know. Okay. Um. Ba, 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 ba. I, I would definitely chip in for did, a compass. Did Noel tell John when they're leaving? Oh, yeah, I can share that with you when I meet up today. Or when we, when I visit you at your the shop. John will then let the blacksmith know that he's, his time is up and he's leaving. Well, you're uh, leaving in... Uh, for the island. It'll be and... the 24th, and today is the 16th. Yeah, yep. So eight days. So in eight days. All right, well, I guess eight more days then. Good to have any while we did. Yeah, I've learned a lot. I had some concerns early on, but uh, you really, uh, really buckled down toward. You saw weeks. that news article about the falling guy and the bear. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring that up. That 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 the falling guy was me. Yeah, no, <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't going to bring that up. <laughs> just, just, just he, so you he know, he looks the, a the little reason, uncomfortable. <laughs> that you just, were just so you know the reason fucking... that I was. Just so you know the <laughs> reason I was missing. Yeah, we, we don't have to. We don't have to get into it. Like, you're just here to learn to smith, man, and I'm I, not involved with this. I just didn't want you to think I was wizard like shit. It, it's fine. It's it is. It's fine. I just we're good. He he just he. This is a real like salt of the earth kind of guy. This is like way above his fucking level of comfort dealing with dark wizards and fucking gate watch killings in the street and shit. I feel like every interaction these two have is like the makings of a sitcom. <laughs> Just like zero compatibility here. Um, so you like there's football? a reason there's a reason this guy makes hinges, right? Because <laughs> his dad made hinges and his dad before him made hinges. And that's good enough. Um, so yes, curios and possibly looking to anti nausea things if that's even real. Sure. Uh, yeah, you could definitely um, ask around, find a, a recommendation to a local apothecary, uh, and um, the uh, the neighborhood kind of recommends, like the people kind of in the street, I guess you would talk to. They, they would kind of point you towards uh, what seems to be the most well regarded. Um, sort of medicine house uh, in the neighborhood here. Um, Manuel's Medicines. Hmm. Uh, and uh, inside um, there is a uh, pretty well lit um, little sale room floor uh, sales floor, excuse me. Uh, big uh, display of, of cabinets with all of these bottles and and herbs and stuff uh, behind sort of glass panes along the back wall behind the counter. Um, there's some comfortable chairs uh, with like a little sort of sitting table um, in one corner uh, that almost looks like a reading nook. There's a couple of books just kind of set up there. Um, and uh, yeah, there, there's a, a handful of um, almost like souvenir gifts that are on display in the window. Uh, it, they look almost like local crafts that this guy kind of buys and sells. Um, you see like a couple of like uh, musical instruments. Um, one looks like this long hollowed out gourd that's had this ribbing carved into it um, with a stick and some holes drilled in. Uh, another one, you know, there's like a handmade tambourine that's like embroidered um, and painted. Do any of them um, look like they were made by Jerge? No, these these actually look like 
nice. Really nice, like locally crafted sort of percussion instruments. Um, it's like a, a handmade leather hide drum. Cool. Not George um, Folly. No, George is the kind of guy who's like he'll take a trash can and and fucking like Make bang out all, bang all the dents out and be like it's a drum. <laughs> Uh, so I'll start no, looking they, through the, the random knickknacks. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, behind the counter, there is uh, sort of an elvish figure, bronze skin, very dark, thick hair, uh, and a faint sort of scruff on uh, his cheeks, uh, and a, a thin, narrow little mustache. Uh, he will uh, kind of see you all come in and be like, oh, welcome, please. Uh, what can I do for you? Hi, I'm looking for two things. One you may be able to help me with, and the other you definitely will be able to help with. Um, specifically, a compass and something to help nausea when you're traveling on the sea. Ah, nausea I can definitely help you with. Give me one second, and he'll uh, turn back to the cabinets and start kind of poking through uh, the various files, and eventually he'll pull out um, a handful of these... Um, Glass vials containing these little, almost pressed, uh, chalky uh, pills. I'll just kind of shake them at you and be like, uh, these are excellent for nausea and motion sickness. Uh, we usually give them out for uh, pregnancy, but um, they double just as well uh, if you are prone to getting seasick. Oh, honestly, I don't know, but um, better sick than sorry, right? I mean, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, what do you say to uh, one vial of these 30 capsules? Should last you three weeks. Um, say three silver. Sure, uh, that sounds fine to me. Um, do you do you have a compass as well? Just while I'm trying to do all my shopping in one place. Compass, maybe. Uh, I can look around. Give me one second. He'll literally just start rummaging through drawers. <laughs> oh, right here in my pocket. Lotus stone. Yeah. yeah, I mean, he's like he's like looking through like next to the cash register. You can see, you know, there's like pens and gloves and just like the junk drawer. He's got like three of those behind the counter. He's just just rummaging. Or a lodestone, not a lotus stone. Brain. Uh, lotus stone sounds cooler. He does. Funnily enough, I do have one, actually. <laughs> he will pull out a very dingy, uh, rust-backed compass. <laughs> um, the the little disc sort of sitting inside, is it's so faded, you can only make out the, the red arrow that points north. Everything else is completely peeled off. That's all it's you so need. Um... You know what? Let's just do the pills. <laughs> you sure? Yeah, I think it so. works. I... He shakes it. It kind of like. <laughs> I 100% believe you. I appreciate the effort, but um, I think after we'll all that, it. I knew I had one around here. But um, if you don't want it, that's fine. So, uh, one vial. Sure. Anyone else? You know, I'm okay. not, I'm very certain that two of our members of our party are not going to need those. So, one will I be fine. Right. I, I right. probably won't, but it's but as you said, better safe than sorry. Exactly. All right. Who's over? Also, Lori gets seasoned, also before be I hand the money over, <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to insight check to make sure this guy's not bullshitting me about these pills. Like, does it seem like he's like, oh, some fucking idiots? <laughs> Let me get the sugar pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me an insight check. I'll help, kind of, if I can. Is that a thing I can help? Do you want to roll or do you want to give me advantage? I'll give you advantage. Your insight's probably better than mine. It's definitely not. It's a wisdom thing, isn't it? Oh, both well, of you that start, means... Both of you start squinting. Burberry, like, comes up next to you, and, like, you're both squinting at him together. That's a 20. A... 20. It's way better than me. He seems really relaxed, honestly. He just seems like he's just doing his job. Like, you, you don't get any skanky vibes off of him at all. Yeah, just I'll a, go ahead and also buy one. Just a local medicine man cool. selling drugs. I will hand over three <laughs> silver. Oh, do you okay. have any hangover cure? Uh, not that I sell, but uh, I can give you a recipe. 
Uh, sure. Uh, how much would that cost? We're gonna charge. You seem nice. Uh, He'll fucking rip off a small piece of paper and grab a pen. He'll be like, "He's gonna write, don't drink." <laughs> <laughs> the doctor says, "Stop drinking." No, the doctor says, "Keep drinking." Actually, uh, pour yourself one shot in the morning. Mix that uh, with a raw egg, a little bit of cayenne. Shake it up real good. Fix you right up. And you don't happen to sell cayenne. I might have some in the back. Because <laughs> he grabs that of his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> he leaves the room for a minute and comes back out with a tiny shaker of cayenne. It's like yeah. half empty. No, I'll get it for it. Oh, how, how, how much you want for it? Bopper. Done. It, he hands it to you. It's, it, there's like a fucking a quarter left in this little pile. That's okay. And the great thing is, uh, Burberry, if that doesn't work, then you have the anti-nausea pills. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm ever sleepy one morning, just stiff a thing of this, I'll wake up real quick. It's no. not. Um, I'll go find a compass I'll... somewhere where I can get a nice one. Okay. A nice compass is probably going to run you... God, I don't know. The internet says 10. 10 gold? Uh, I'll pop in for 5. Should we also get the, the thing that allows you to navigate by the stars? An astrolab? That might be really expensive. Do they have those? I'm assuming I, I mean, find a curio shop, so... Yeah, finding 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 instruments of navigation are... I mean, fuck, you know a cartographer. He probably has fucking maps. <laughs> and I got the impression from his store that it was primarily maps. You're not wrong. You know, like, uh, he walked in and said, hey, do you sell I'm, compasses? He'd be like, get out. Get <laughs> You disgust me. So could Burberry <laughs> and I split a really nice compass for five gold each? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I would like to say that I probably Indeed, stole Gerald fair. away at some point. I that's fine. Go. Yeah, what do you guys want to do? John wants to go find an astral. <laughs> John wants to go and find mescaline? An astral. An astral. <laughs> I thought you said mescaline. Wow. Like, John's going to go find mescaline. What the fuck, John? <laughs> Who's mescaline? Mescaline's a drug. Oh, Oh, apparently I mean, John wants know. to get fucked up. Mescaline's a real strong fucking psychedelic drug. <laughs> I've never even heard of it before. Uh, Astrolab. Um, that sextant. is... Like, what is the name of that thing? It's a sextant. Oh, actually, that would What's be a in sextant? a fucking um, a kit. A sextant? Uh, yeah. It's, you, use it, it's, it's a, you use it to navigate the stars. It measures. Oh, oh! You want the the, the telescope thing? The what? Okay. Well, I just I want the thing that allows you to navigate by the stars. Well, there's 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 a couple of those. There's the little Astrolab is a little like compass looking disc instrument that you use. That it's got like a, like a star map almost. And then there's yeah the sextant. Cats talk about it, which is the the arch with the lenses. Um, I think the arch with the lens needs more math. So my. My character that does not do math is going to go for the other option. <laughs> um, <laughs> they both involve a decent amount of math. So, uh, yeah, yeah, because the, the, the Astrolab is like, it's got all these like concentric circles and shit for like measuring angles and orbits and whatever. I, I don't know how they fucking work. It's cool looking, though. Um, at any rate, those are probably going to be components out of a, uh, I think it's a navigator's kit, is what it's called. Um, or nav navigator's, navigator's tools. tools. Yeah. Uh, so those would be twenty-five gold pieces for the entire set. Uh, so that would include a sextant, compass, calipers, ruler, parchment, ink, and quill. So yeah, if, if you guys wanted to go in on a on a full navigator's tool set, you would get the compass and the sextant and the calipers all together. Sure, we could split that three ways if you guys want to do that. Yeah, let's do that. I'll throw okay. in seven gold. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. How much do we need? It's it's twenty five. Oh wait, eight. Eight, eight. eight per and I'll three, cover three, the remainder. Three, three. Yeah. 
I'll, I'll cover the remainder after or after so the eight, eight, extra nine. one. Eight, eight, nine. Yeah. So I'll I'll do the nine. Okay. okay. So yeah, you guys have a group of a uh, a set of navigators tools. I'll hold on to them. Um, is anyone proficient with navigators tools? Nope. All right, have nope. fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything else you guys want to do? Uh, Lauren has stolen Gerald away to go. I have something I want to do, but not with Gerald. Oh, well, what did what were you doing with Gerald today? What was the the idea? I don't know. Whatever he wanted to do. Oh, okay. He's, he's, he's... back in town, so I want him to have fun. I do what he wants they to are do. going for what the colloquials call a date. For chance. Uh, so real talk. Uh. Back in town now, Gerald does have some work to do. Uh, so if you're cool with hanging out around the Presidium while he gets some shit done, you guys can kind of hang out and. I'll tell him I'll meet him there because I want to look at, into something. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to look into the bank account with the bags. Ah. Okay. So you want to go to the uh, the the Bank of Himalar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, heading down Banker's Row, which is one of uh, the main streets off of Liberation Square, uh, close to the waterfront, um, the very heart of downtown, uh, there is a handful of uh, very opulent, uh, probably nine to ten story tall towers, um, the, the, the bank buildings. Uh, in sort of the financial heart of this city. Uh, and you can find the Bank of Himalar without issue. Uh, it has these large, heavy metal doors that are inlaid with gold and silver and this almost Ooh. bluish okay. uh, metal that, that kind of shines in the light in a way that it, it almost glows on its own. Um, like a small, like six-man squad of like heavily armored dwarven guards standing out front, uh, with spears um, kind of tucked under their shoulders, just full like plate armor, beards sticking out underneath uh, the face visors. Uh, they just kind of watch you enter as you uh, pass through the doorways, um, and there's more of these um, sentries standing inside, uh, kind of lining uh, this central teller's hall where you've got all these booths set up. Um, you can see tons of these dwarves um, sitting one at each booth um, behind the glass. Lots of people standing in queues uh, waiting to speak with these tellers. There's a handful of desks at the far end of the room uh, where uh, some more opulently dressed uh, individuals, dwarves with gold in their braids and heavy rings on their fingers are sitting talking with clients uh, and overhead uh, kind of casting this soft uh, almost ethereal glow over the entire uh, affair is this beautiful crystal chandelier uh, that is composed almost entirely uh, the metalwork of that same silvery blue glowing uh, metal so I'll wait in line. Find yourself in line, step inside, wait for while, half an hour to 45 minutes, maybe, uh, before you get a chance to talk to a teller. Uh, this bald dwarf uh, with a very nicely uh, combed, very straight, wispy beard uh, that kind of goes down to his belt. Um, he has it kind of bunched up in a bow uh, with some, like, ribbon uh, kind of Beckons you to take a seat. So what can I do for you today? Um, I'd like to open up a bank account with those little baggies. Uh, bags of saving. Yes. Yeah, so you heard uh, about our secure uh, savings enchantments. Um, who exactly is uh, opening this account then? If I can get your personal information, ma'am. That'd be me. Your name, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's me. My name is me. Me. Me, me. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, and how will you be paying for your bag? I'm just kidding. Today? It's a Lauren Agula. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. 
And how do you how will you be planning to pay for your bag today? Is that going to be uh, in cash? Uh, do you have junctions that you wish to exchange instead? How much is it? Uh, 100 gold pieces, ma'am. Can we do like a installment plan? <laughs> Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> my, my husband's off in war and I'm trying to get away for us to <laughs> communicate to each other and I just I just want to talk to my husband. It's a real shame, man. <laughs> Let's quickly turn it from a persuasion to a deception. Turn it to deception. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, is it a deception or a persuasion? Are you going to say all that or are you going to... I'll do persuasion. So you're not going to say any of that shit about the war? Um, no, I'm going to say all that shit about the war. You're gonna, All right, deception. Okay. Uh, so I rolled. 18. 18. And I think I get a plus 2 on Okay. So 20 total. Yeah. Um, so you, you kind of muster up a little bit of tears and start telling your story about how you just want to stay in touch with your, your, your hubby who's finally back. And uh, the dwarf kind of gets this concerned look on his face. He's like, oh, my poor lass, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sure we could work something out. Uh, well, um, what's a, what's what's what sort of timetable are are we looking at then? Um, I'm sure we could get you a favorable interest rate if we're looking at something like a bi-monthly payment. It's every uh, three weeks, say. Could I put could make money that... in the bag to serve as the payment? <laughs> certainly, we could certainly just withdraw it directly from your account. Hundred gold pieces for a bag. Ooh. That's a lot less than I was expecting, to be honest. Yeah. It's not like, a. Oh, only rich people have to spend. It is a bag of savings, not a bag it... of holding. It is not like a full size bag of holding. This I is mean... like a, a decently sized like big. It's like a wallet. It's a very large wallet. It's a big coin purse, right? Like it's not coin. you. You can't fit a ton of shit in here. Um, coin purse. Well, no, yeah, I, it's, I, it's I was a, more just like, I imagine the enchantment is similar to a bag of holding. A bag of holdings are expensive as fuck. Is so. there only one bag? or? It's there... So an account comes with a single bag. We can link up other bags uh, to your account if you'd like. Uh, however, each additional bag is another 100 gold pieces. Is there anything you can do to help? Well, as I said, we could set you up with an installment plan. Talk to me. Talk to me. What are we looking at financially right now? Have you ever had a chance to talk with a financial advisor about your situation, ma'am? Well, not well, expecting this to matter. I just miss my husband. <laughs> what kind of bag is this again? Bag of savings. Oh, can I ask an out of character question? Sure. Can you stick things besides gold in it that have monetary value, like gemstones? I think we already know the answer uh, to that. Like, I'm not, I'm not talking items. I just mean like, you know, diamonds, sapphires, rubies, all that nonsense. Uh, I'll say, give me the, just a general intel or history check, I guess, Burberry, from what you know about these. Oh, I feel real good. Uh, that's a twenty-three. <laughs> uh, yeah, they operate on a very as. Pete said they, they operate on a very simple similar principle to a bag of holding uh, rather instead of linking to an extra dimensional space it just operates as a sort of quick link to another physical space in the uh, material plane um, there's really not a limit on what can be put into it it's a, it's a limit on who can put into it uh, the the bags are enchanted to only uh, permit the designated owners of the account to access the contents of the vault. If that's the case, I can contribute some so we could have some like, storage option stuff. It is so. This is not like a huge bag. Like I said, it, the mouth is not bigger than maybe like this this big around. So you like you get a hand in there, but beyond that, like you're not getting a ton of like 
equipment into this into this vault. It's it's a very small you can put an umbrella uh, inside. opening. Like, you could fit a sword, maybe. Sword, you say? You could fit. No, 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 okay, no, okay. that's not how that works. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just wow. you're just fucking the vault at this point. That that's wow, just. Wow, he's like... that an awful lot, just in and out and in. I'm just gonna toss it out there. I really don't know if we're in a financial situation to need this yet. But it's up to you guys. It would be a very interesting way to communicate with other people. Because be if you put like an empty journal in there, you could literally just pass letters back and forth without actually having to take a courier. Yeah. I guess. Sure. You know, who, do we talk, who do we need to talk to so bad? Gerald wants to talk, or Lauren wants to talk to Gerald. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so this, this man will sit you down. Uh, as you're sort of fake crying to him, and he's gonna give you like a really short little lesson on on financial literacy. He, he starts talking to you about your income versus your expenditure month to month, uh, and basically kind of starts kind of like piecing together what your uh, your current financial situation looks like, trying to find a rate that's gonna work for you. Um, so how do you want to like steer this? Because with that twenty, you've you've got a meeting out of your hand. Um, what kind of monthly rate are you looking at, wanting to to pay off this bag? And do you want one or two bags? I want the two bags because just having one bag is pretty pointless, I'd say. Or, the wallet. Okay. It's so you don't have to carry around lots and lots of pounds of things. Because after a certain point, gold gets real heavy. It is lighter, and it's a lot more secure. Because if people steal it, it's just a bag. Yep. If it's worth it, that's a lot. I'm gonna put Gerald's dagger in it. Or not Gerald, Gerald's, Willem's, Willem's dagger in what? For what it's worth, ma'am. Uh, if you are uh, attempting to communicate long distance through the vault, uh, it's an unconventional use of these uh, bags, but it, it's not unheard of. Um, as long as the intended recipient uh, is near one of our branches, uh, they can always make a withdrawal directly from uh, the branch itself. Uh, they don't need to access the vault through the bag necessarily. We can access uh, individual vaults on command uh, from here, just in case, say, you lose your back and cannot access your own funds by yourself. Talk it's one of Jeremy. the many services we offer here at the Bank of Himalar. Just go to the bank. So I if just... one bag is all you need, for the time being, we can certainly make that happen. And then when you're in a more secure position financially, your husband's about to be deployed again, maybe, and you've got a forward on his next paycheck. You could probably start the payment plan for that second bag after you've got your first one paid off. In principle, in total. How does that sound? Drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, it's nice. I just... I should say what's been... I understand, ma'am. It's daunting, but we here at the Bank of Hibala are committed to ensuring that you have the most secure financial uh, health you could possibly have of anyone here in Freeport, anywhere in the world, really. You bank with us, you bank for life. That's our guarantee to you. Commercial music in the background, please. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> bank with us, you bank for life. <laughs> You'll never um, need another bank. What happens if I lose my bag? You simply come back to the branch. You tell us, hey, my bag's been misplaced, it's been lost, it's been stolen, whatever. We do offer location services. We can divine the location of a missing bag. Uh, if it's retrievable, we can start looking at retrieval. Uh, if not, we can also shut off access to the bag, simply get you a new one for a small fee. 
get you back on the way. You get a small fee for a new bag. Don't you think you might be able to do that for the second bag? <laughs> I just want to make sure I can talk to my husband. Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. 14. 14. I'd really like to, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's just, it, you know, the bank is a business. And I, I can I can work out an installment plan. That's not a problem. I can make that happen for you, and it won't be a huge issue. But undercutting, you know, the, the going rates for these things, that, that's something set in stone from higher up. I'm sorry. I can make the one bag happen for you, though. And as long as your hubby's here in Freeport, he can always come by the bank here. We make his withdrawal, uh, whatever it is that he needs to pull out, either it's his notes or, or, or journals or whatever, uh, you're storing to communicate with him. He can always make that withdrawal here. No charge. We're never going to bar you from access to your own vaults. I just need to think about it. All right, man. Well, when you uh, come to a decision, please come back and find me. My name's Ori. Ori, Ori Blackstone. All right. You, you find me specifically, all right? And we'll sit down uh, and we'll make sure that we get you uh, a payment plan that works for you. Thank you, Ori. 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 With an R. Order? I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just run out of the bank. There, there, dearie. It's Darvish. I know. <laughs> it's all right. And he just like you see a coworker kind of glance over, like, "What the fuck is taking so long?" And he's just like, "I, I, I don't know." You've been, <laughs> like that, just you've been your with that for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so are we just not feeling the the bag right now? No. Okay, fair enough. So, leaving the bank, uh, catching back up with Gerald, he'll uh, see you at the Presidium and you guys can just kind of hang out while he is... Uh... The, what's the bank again? The Bank of... The Bank of Himmler. Thank you. Well, I'm just going to throw it out to my fellow party members. Why did we buy a navigator's kit? <laughs> Literally, none of us can use it. You do have a compass now. I just wanted the compass, man. I just wanted the compass, too. Well, John, I you have some explaining to, to pick do. pick up a new skill. <laughs> <laughs> how to sext it. No, not how to sext. That's a different section. All right. Anything... I didn't realize none of us could use it at first. <clears throat> I mean, that is a very niche thing. I don't, like, most... most. I didn't realize... So at first, I didn't realize it was, like, considered a tool that you had to have proficiency to use. My thing I mean, is, it uh, helps. My thinking with the compass was just, like, if we need to travel at night, we can at least know where we're, where we're fucking going. That's true. I was thinking more along the lines of like navigating by the sea. Like, isn't I that feel like the captain's probably sense? got that covered. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what's gonna happen? Also true. We're stuck out on a rowboat. All of us permission. Damn it! Where's the sextant? All right. Well, I will hold on to the compass, and you can hold on to the rest of the navigator's kit. Oh. Uh, also, uh, Gerald will probably bring this up with Aloran at some point, um, since. You guys have some time. Uh, so, since you guys are like going out to sea and stuff, uh, what all, what all does that usually involve for like tritons when you guys are, you know, swimming around? Do you guys have like special bags you carry your shit in, or do you just regular bags, or how does that work? Do you care out if stuff of, gets wet? Out of character question: Are there freshwater tri tritons and saltwater tritons? Not really. They're pretty flexible. All of the tritons generally stick to like deep water so primarily salt water i guess sometimes deep lakes gotcha okay the cool. and sea elves tend to be more of a like a coastal 
slash river type I people. I don't know the answer to that question, DM. So hey, uh, for me. <laughs> how about you make something up? <laughs> In this game of make believe, tell me about your culture, Johnny. Do you guys care if stuff gets wet? Depends on what it is, I guess. All right. So how do you keep stuff dry if you need to keep it dry? What do you do? Underwater flames. <laughs> 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 they pull a SpongeBob. Yeah. <laughs> we have like a no. We pull a Sandy from SpongeBob. We have like a dome <laughs> where we put all of our. You guys like make glass down there? In our dome, yes. There are like volcanic dope. vents underwater. That's true. That's kind of sick, actually. I don't know. Yeah, sure. We'll use volcanic vents. That sounds cooler than a dome. All right. <laughs> Did, uh, did, were you able to like bring any of that stuff from you when you left home? Uh, Going to, back to the coast? No, it was all destroyed. Ah, oh, shit. There was a lot of dead bodies. Yeah, that that's true. Um, it was all dead. Do you think you're going to be going like underwater and stuff while you're out there? I probably should. I don't know about anybody else. I looks around. It's like, you gonna, do you think you're going to need more glass containers to carry your stuff. Do you have a special interest in glass, Gerald? I'm just curious. Like, I just, I don't know how tritons work. I, I, I'm honestly, we don't really see a lot of tritons in the, in the watch, so I've never had really a, a lot of chance to talk to people about them. I don't, I don't know a lot. I mean, just, just, I'm just trying to learn. Just, just curious. Okay. This is, a lot of it is revolving around glass. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I you just, said glass. I'm just trying to. to... <laughs> you said glass. <laughs> you said glass. I'm just trying to figure out what you said. You know what? This relationship's over. Both <laughs> <laughs> oh part over glass. Yeah. Um. I do yeah. leave in eight days, though. I'll tell him that. In eight days. Yeah. 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 You you mentioned it earlier. Okay. Yeah. Eight days. Um. About a week, you know, we got some time to hang. Oh, just hang? Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> Certainly <laughs> something hanging in the air. <gasps> 21! Hey, oh, shit. Fucking! <laughs> Unfortunately, the DC was 22. <laughs> <laughs> it's always one higher than we roll. Um. Yeah, you say that, and he just kind of laughs, and he will, he will lean in for a kiss. Oh, yeah. you, you've done so it. Long. Maybe a little more. <laughs> Maybe a little more. Oh, okay. I guess I can take that wink. You know, I can't wink, but wink. <laughs> you will very. Is the. It... Not a natural look, but he tries. <laughs> he's find it he's like blinking, like the other eye, like they're both closing. He can't get one closed. Not used to this, it's weird. It's okay, we'll work on it. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, uh, the next day when you go to see Gerald, uh, he actually does have a gift for you. A small collection of... Glass? Triton glass jars. <laughs> I knew he had an obsession with glass. Hey, did you need more glass jars? I'm like, you like glass or something, bro? I mean, if you're going underwater, you might need to keep stuff dry. I figured this would be a way to do it. So, you know, asking how you did it. Now I know. I got you. See yeah, that? So. How many glass jars did I get? Five. Okay. Like different colors. Very thick, like sturdy glass. So like, they'll hold up pretty well underwater. Rubber stoppers. No, wait, not rubber. That wouldn't hold up. They got some kind of seal. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's like it's like the glass jars that have the uh, the clamp on it. So it's got like that thin piece of rubber between the two panels. Yeah. Well, like, and they open from the bottom too, so that you can you can like. 
uh, open it and the air bubble stays inside, doesn't fill with water instantly. Like they're, 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 they're designed to be, they're, they're Triton made, you know, they come. They're, they're... Well, this, is, this is your fantasy background, Johnny. I'm just trying to live in it. <laughs> well, so, so here's the thing, right? So if you open a thing upside down in the water, whatever's in it's still going to fall. There's like a there's like a shelf thing in there that like catches most of it, and you can like reach up and like around whatever. Look, it's, it's, it's a weird. It's outside it's, of our understanding. Outside the understanding of can humankind, but Tritons they know how to make this shit. That we carry. Do what? It's an enchanted bag that we carry. I didn't know I needed to come up with like a whole lore of culture, <laughs> so I've been more prepared. For that. I was. It just occurred to me. I was curious what would happen. What like how you would handle dealing with wet shit. Triton, Triton jars have like twelve knobs, <laughs> like a lever and a crank. I have yeah, to like apply you... soap to put the, your hand through the bubble at the bottom. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'd say maybe it's like there's a lot of like enchantment. Okay. And stuff. So, like, we have bags where the inside's enchanted to keep water out. Okay. And maybe there's, like, one place, like, the like the office, like, the town hall mm -hmm. is, like, enchanted so there's no water in it. So we can host people there. Okay. You know, there has to be something ironic about the Tritons coming up with hydrophobic technology. Well, it's not really for us to be able to communicate with the outside. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I assume most Tritons and stuff like that is all meant to be in water. Yeah. Yeah. For I'd the few things that need to be dry, like this is paper. what you do. Or we write on seaweed. Help. Help paper. How do you write on seaweed, though, if it's I'll underwater? Put... You scratch yeah. it. I no. Lava rock? Gerald is going to fucking grill you about the finer points of Triton <laughs> uh, living and, and how that shit works during your, your eight days together. I'll figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> you have great answers for all of it. Yeah. Um, he is, in canon, he is genuinely curious. Um, okay. Out of canon, I do kind of want to hassle I will you, ask so. him, like, do you like our Triton attire? And then I'll gesture to my beautiful outfit. I mean... It... 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 it, it yeah. I'll take that as and then, yeah. you, and then you finish with, or do I look better without it? Oh, yeah. Oh. I say that. I say oh, that. Oh, shit. Yes. Things escalate quickly. Please don't be in public. <laughs> you guys are, like, out in the yard, like, fucking, like, shoveling fucking hay in the stables. And you just whip that one out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, 2 p.m. Yeah. He's, like... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Give me another persuasion check. Not even an advantage. advantage? Yeah. With advantage, sure. Ooh, 17. Okay. Roll for dim and titties. 11. What? I said roll for dim titties. <laughs> for dim titties? Okay, well, my highest roll is a 17. 17 total? Plus, um, so I had a 17 and 11. Uh, my persuasion, I think, is a plus 4. So that is a. 21 again! Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we do it in the hay. Sure. Sure. Really? In the hay. <laughs> we do it? After 76 <laughs> hours. Alora achieves her goal. And Alora she's done with him. Officially... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't that good. All right, fine. Roll performance. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Looks like they're having quite the heyday. Oh, God. What did Flat roll? He looked really bad, didn't he? I mean, it's been a while for him. Oh, he's getting the webcam. We can't see it. I can't see can't it. Can't see it from there. Closer. Enhance. Is Enhance. It one? It's close. Just pick it up. Four? Oh no, that ain't Four. good. <laughs> Damn, he's not comfortable enough yet. Can he keeps keep knocking the jars. He's got a piece of hay poking his butt. Um, <laughs> let me let me let me pull up his modifier just so that I I'm not totally fucking whiffing this. Uh, 
okay. Alora's ripping it too. <laughs> oh no. What'd you get? I got an eight. Total? No, I think it's like a plus two for performance. A ten? Yeah. That's average. I'm so sad. Nah. It's gonna make an excuse to be like, this isn't a very good place. We should try your pick. Yeah, he got an eight too. Uh, total. Yeah, I got a so it's a ten. So we'll, we'll say there's 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 some making out and like heavy petting. Um, but heavy hay petting? is hay hay is getting everywhere. Heavy you know you know what that is, right? No. It's it's like not quite going that far, but like. Oh, got it. Okay, got you're it. You're working up to it. Got it. Um, I know. Heavy petting before like a. <laughs> yeah, uh, hay's getting everywhere though. It's very scratchy and uncomfortable, and like it's like drying you out, like fucking horribly. Just you know, usually you you want to moisturize the triton, and hay is not good for that. I'm be like, oh my god, I'm so itchy, and I'm gonna take out my little perfume bottle of water. For <laughs> <my mouth. laughs> he like gets in his eyes, like ah, jeez, ah, I, I think there's still some perfume in there. <laughs> this is a bad idea. <laughs> This is more romantic in our heads. <laughs> he like sits up, he's like rubbing his arm. Let's find some actual water. And the moment's kind of gone. <laughs> but she tried. So close. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, this is probably like your sixth or seventh day in town at this point. Um, you guys kind of work up to that. And uh, pretty soon it is time, the day of your departure. Uh, I'm gonna try to bang him before we leave. <laughs> One last time. I'm sorry. <laughs> the night of the seventh. The night of the seventh. I'm I was gonna say, more. I do have another. What's your plan? Have... Here, you can do uh, David's thing. Okay, okay. I, I was just about to say, I do have another letter to send to Maul. Okay, what you got? Alright, I'll put it in general. Here. He finally relented. I can't let oh. this go, guys. Can I can I pass my inspiration over to Lawrence? Just... Row three. <laughs> Ray on Onus the third. I know. I just yep. love that that shortening of it. Play. Yep. Can I pass my inspiration over to Lauren for this? Yeah. Yeah. If you want to. Yes. Uh, so, Lauren, what is what is your plan here exactly? Like, so, so like it's the sixth. You guys have your little encounter in the hay, and it's like it's nice, but it also is like ah fuck, itchy and perfume in the eyes, and ugh, I need to wash this bottle out better. So, the seventh rolls around. You guys spend the day together again. Having a pretty good day. Okay. He's like got he's got like an office set up now in one of the, the side rooms on the second floor of the keep where he's he's starting to kinda of get organized and get his shit together to start working again now that he can't really be in the field. Um I'm gonna be like, I'd like to be with you. At least for one night before I'm gone for whoever knows how long. So <laughs> Some cheesy ass shit. <laughs> just, you just fucking lay it on real thick. Yeah. Says, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> I'd like that too. Uh, give me another performance check. Okay. God, another fucking eight. You have advantage. I know. I'm You're the inspiration. I'm gonna send their inspiration to Gerald. <laughs> what is this? Well, didn't grimace when he rolled, so I don't think he rolled that bad. Got a 16. That's pretty 18. good. That's so how 18. much total? 18 total? Yep. Okay. He got a 15 plus 4 total. There so you go. Much go. better. Yay! Good the morning. night before you leave... <laughs> uh, Thank you, John. <laughs> you guys meet in, uh, in Gerald's office and he Closes the door, locks it. You guys have a nice, uh, intimate moment together. Congratulations. Hey, back for introducing you. It finally happened. So, you did it. Uh, the next morning, you awaken in his arms, in his bed, sun is shining on your face, and realize, oh shit, I gotta be at the docks. <laughs> <laughs> Later, loser. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, write me! He calls out the window as you fucking run down the street, toast in your mouth. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> the party will reconvene 
and make their way to the Iron Wharf, where they will meet uh, Captain uh, Archie. Uh, oh fuck! I lost his last name. What was it? Gardner. Gardner. Archie Gardner. Thank you. Um, and just like you found him uh, last time, he is very hurriedly whipping his crew into shape. Everybody's got like a cup of coffee sitting somewhere, like on the ship or like on the dock. Uh, they're like fucking hurriedly taking sips uh, between crates. And he's like, come on, people, let's move, let's move, let's get everything in, we gotta go, we gotta be underway within the hour, let's move. Uh, and he'll see you guys and be like, okay, fantastic, please, file on after this, go, 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 everybody up on the ship. Uh, so, we have a uh, crew cabin down below, once everything's loaded, we can show you down there, we can stow your things, and I'm just gonna ask... Uh, mind your heads, be careful. Uh, the ship is constantly moving. Lots of swinging parts, ropes to get hung on. Just, I don't have any waivers, but I'm asking you, please exercise your due diligence while you're on my ship. Um, also, worth noting, uh, the seas are not exactly the safest place in the world in the event that we are boarded by anything dangerous. Uh, can you take care of yourselves? You look like you can, and so do you. He points to uh, Barnaby and John, who are both, like, fucking giant and carrying giant weapons. Sarcastic and say, I don't know, I might drown if I fall in. <laughs> That's cute. Can you fight? Fight? Yes. Small thing like me. <laughs> I think we yes. can handle ourselves for the most part. Sorry. Okay. Yes. I am not much of a fighter, but I do help fighters set last for longer. Yeah, me and uh, my friend Burberry here are uh, more support, but... John's oh. holding his giant, <laughs> giant glaive. He's like... If anything happens on the ship, uh, do your best to stay on the ship. Try not to fall overboard. That always makes things a lot, a lot messier. Uh, if you have to, please take cover in the bunks down below deck. Uh, I would much prefer that my passengers not die en route if I can help it. That's not good for business. Are we more afraid of monsters or pirates? Uh, pirates are not super common this close to the mainland. Uh, I haven't ever dealt with them myself. Uh, we are more concerned about... Uh, Hungry wildlife uh, and the occasional uh, deep sea marauder. Uh, he'll kind of look at you, uh, Aloran. You're familiar with Sahaugan. Uh, they are not too uncommon uh, in these parts. Uh, you get them occasionally, uh, though they tend not to attack uh, moving targets. So, we, uh, just be careful. And again, if anything uh, does happen, if we are attacked, please, uh, protect yourselves. Please. Please. I really don't want my name attached to your obituary, if I can help it. Please. All right. All good? Yep, we're good. Good. All right. Uh, let's get this show on the road, guys. Um, let's wrap up here, get these carts uh, underway, and, and we'll, we'll uh, get this ship moving. Um, like a well-oiled machine, uh, the crew very quickly loads up the last bit of cargo waiting uh, on the deck. Um, you can kind of feel the ship lurch every time another crate comes on board, and it almost feels like it's sinking just slightly lower and lower into the water with every extra uh, bit of weight. Um, and where, you know, half an hour ago, uh, looking over the edge of the ship, you know, the water was maybe 15 feet away from you. Uh, by the time the ship's hull is loaded, uh, you've probably sunk another five feet down. You know, if you were to lean over, John, you could probably reach the water with your hand. Like, it's, it's, it's gotten a lot closer. Um, but uh, with all the weight down below, the ship does kind of stop rocking quite as much. It feels a little bit more stable. Uh, and uh, without really any real bravado or daring do here, he just says, all right, we're shoving off, and literally just kicks 
the pier uh, from the edge of the ship just very, very slowly starts to lurch, and you see people grabbing oars and pushing, beginning to push the ship out uh, away from uh, the docks and out to sea. And you watch as the masts are pulled down, the sails unfurled, and this ship catches the wind and begins slowly drifting away from Freeport and out into the bay, sort of in a wide arc, passing the Iron Wharf, passing the Green Keep on the waterfront near the Crimson Coast with all of their party ships and sail barges, past Fort Franco, the Eastern Alliance military base near the edge of town, their handful of warships docked uh, at the foot of their fort, and finally past the walls of the crumbling Presidium. And before long, that fortress is behind you, and you are underway, bound for Feral. So, let's wrap there. And we'll pick up next time on your first boat trip on as a Pondy. We're on a boat! I'm and it's going fast. I'm staying near the middle God. of the boat. I mean, we have two people that can literally breathe in the swim. How, how very, very nice for you. <laughs> yeah. Gerber is like, fuck that shit. <laughs> Are you aquaphobic? As far as you know, yes. <laughs> it's come up once. All of once. Always with the fucking fairies. And Lauren had a wonderful session. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren got a lot done. And a lot Woo. of well, she got something done. Sure. <laughs> um, I will nominate John as MVP for giving me his inspiration so I could successfully bang <laughs> Gerald. <laughs> I will nominate Lauren for banging Gerald. John, John's the real homie. <laughs> I feel like whoever... I if someone fucks, they gotta get inspiration, right? That's been the trend so far. I think that's how it should work, yeah. So, a Lauren for MVP. I will die. <laughs> Is there a new home rule? A Lauren for fucking. I mean, I'll, I'll, if someone, if someone gets down, I'll vote for them for MVP. Is all I'm saying. Congratulations, to Lauren. You. I'm honestly shocked that it happened this session. You've won back your inspiration. MVP. Wait, wait, wait. Are we, are we still streaming? We are still streaming. We did it. Okay, then I'm keeping that comment to myself. All right. <laughs> um, any supports? Uh, obviously Noel and John. Me and John, we did it. <laughs> Noel and John had a moment, a very revealing yeah. moment. They that's did. The most, that's the most we've heard about Noel's backstory. That's all you're gonna get. What? I figured, and that's all there is. Know quite a lot about my backstory. I figured it's time to allow Noel no to get hers out there, man. I I forgot to mention, and there it's didn't seem moment. to be a very good time, but uh, like as of a week ago or something like that, Burberry now has a flower crown. Oh, that's cute. that's adorable. God damn it! Wait, do I get support with a Lauren for yes. everything? <laughs> John gave you a big pep talk before you went to go <laughs> seal the deal. Yep. He was like, you got this. You got this. If I, could get, if I could get this with Saren, you got this. <laughs> John, John was the one that suggested the line that, uh, about dropping the clothes. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's very true. So John and Lauren. Honeypot, Gerald. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs>